Well, hello, good morning, and welcome to this uh, this competition here in Greece, here on the uh, the western uh, uh, shores of uh, of uh, Peloponnesia in Greece. Uh, this is the Caiaphas battle for 2022. My name is Tony Lightfoot, and glad to have the pleasure of your company. So uh, we've got uh, we've got a lot of skiing uh, to take place, and here is our schedule. In less than 15 minutes, we'll go with the women's uh, round one followed by the men's round one uh, to, to commence shortly afterwards. Then we take a, uh, a, a long Greek style to break before we go into the, uh, the next uh, pro rounds uh, with women and men. So uh, who do we have on the, on the start list whenever we get, uh, whenever we get in, in, the, in the battle? So uh, here we go. We've got a bit, uh, we got uh, Alicia Bagnoli will be taken to the water first, uh, followed by uh, uh, Beatrizia Yanni, both those skiers riding the, the good ski, and uh, two skiers on Team Syndicate uh, follow on. Uh, third out is going to be Ali Nicholson, and the world champion from Canada, Jamie Ball, will be our fourth and final skier. Now, uh, we, with, with, the, with those skiers, each of them will ski uh, two rounds and they'll all go into the final. Uh, so we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, checking in on them from start all the way through to the finish in the women's competition. So uh, we've got uh, Vince in there. We've got uh, a couple of other crew members. I believe that's John there in the background. And uh, things, uh, things are looking uh, pretty sweet uh, right now. As we turn our attention to the starting dock, uh, there's, uh, there's uh, Bea, uh, Beatrice Yanni, who will actually be joining me here on the announcers point, uh, given, given uh, me the benefit of her uh, knowledge and hindsight uh, when the men take to the water. Now, so far as the, when the women take to the water, uh, we'll have uh, Freddie Winter up here uh, uh, co-announcing with me, so uh, that... Uh, that is an obvious delight for those of you uh, fans out there that uh, like for me to get into a bit of a slugging match uh, between myself and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the skier from the London Borough of Wandsworth. Anyway, so uh, we're going to go to a quick break and when we come back uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the, the men's running order and then uh, around about that time we should be ready to go with our first women's competitor. This is the 2022 Caiaphas battle and uh, we'll be back right after these.
All right, everybody, welcome back on the dock. We're here with Alicia getting ready to start the first round of this Battle of Kayafas. How are you feeling, Alicia? Good. Uh, it's the first time here at Kayafas for me. Uh, I'm super excited. I'm going to be the first one on the dock. Uh, we got three rounds before the finals, so, you know, um, a lot of sets to figure out a little bit of the timing of the gate, and then we'll see. And what do you think about the water over here? It's not usual condition because I hear that the water is salty and fresh. It's a mixed water. What do you think about it? Yeah, it's a mix of, of feelings as well. <laughs> um, it's a good feeling. Uh, the water is quite slow and one of the two gates is faster than the other. That's why three rounds is going to be good uh, for the finals to figure out a little bit of timing, but it feels good. All right, perfect, Alicia. Go get situated, get ready, and good luck to you. And back to you, Tony. Thank you very much. Our first visit to Lorenzo's Land there with uh, with Alicia Bagnoli, a skier that comes to us out of uh, out of Milan, and uh, skied in the San Gervasio, uh, a pro am uh, last weekend, and uh, skied pretty well there, as far as I can recall. There is your running order for the Open Women. Alicia Bagnoli will take to the water first, then Beatrice Yanni, uh, both of those competitors are from Italia. And then we've got Ali Nicholson, and rounding off the women is going to be Jamie Ball. So, a lot of things, are, a lot of moving parts are uh, in play. And it uh, looks like we've got uh, Beatriz Ciani, and uh, we've got uh, Lorenzo uh, on, uh, on the side as well, uh, getting things all sorted out there for the, uh, for the Caiaphas uh, battle. Giovanni Andronico is our driver for this stage of the competition. He's getting used to that uh, brand new uh, Nautique uh, bike wreck craft. Taking, uh, taking a good look, hard look down the course before he pilots that boat and picks up our first competitor in this, in this battle. And uh, let's cross back over to Lorenzo's land. All right, we're here with Beatrice. She's going to be second on the dock, uh, on the water today as the boat rolls up. Alicia is getting ready. How are you feeling, Bea? Uh, great. I can't wait to get in the water and ski. Like, yeah. Yesterday we had a great day off all together and now I'm ready to ski. All right, perfect. And do you agree with Alicia about the timing of the gate? Is it that feeling for you as well? Yeah, but fortunately we're going to have like two or three rounds before finals to just adjust, you know? All right, perfect. Then go get focused, go get ready. Best of luck to you and back to you, Tony. Uh, why, thank you there, uh, Lorenzo. Uh, two Italians there on the starting dock uh, are getting things up and running. Actually, a third, if you count uh, Licia Bagnoli, about to uh, depart and make her way towards the... Uh... So, and, uh, and also... Uh, also, as we see Alicia Bagnoli uh, get ready for her turn, uh, one thing that wasn't pointed out in the interview is the fact that uh, Bedford Tiani, uh, her consistency has been rewarded so far by the fact that she is currently fourth place in the in the Water Ski uh, Pro Tour standing. So uh, there's a there's a lot on the line, not only with placement in this event and the and the riches that go along with it, but also points going forward in the Water Ski Pro Tour. So. Yeah, Alicia Bagnoli, who we are not only be, be like competing in this like event, 20 cameras in my face. But, uh, <laughs> but we'll actually be uh, heading over to Alabama uh, next weekend to compete in the World Games uh, as, uh, as Italy's women's <laughs> slalom representative. And now we take a look at the inside of our uh, boat once again. And uh, looking absolutely fabulous out there. I mean, the site is absolutely is absolutely pristine right now. I mean, set in the set right in the middle of the uh, of the of the western uh, western uh, coast of the uh, the Peloponnesian uh, Peninsula. Try and say that several times quickly. So, as all right, all right, and um, we're back to us. And hello, oi oi. Oi, oi. You might want to turn your mic on. Is it on? Yeah, yeah. I, I believe, I believe it's, on. it's on. I've done this right, before so. once or twice. All right. How are you doing there, Freddie? <laughs> I'm doing good. You sound better than last week. Yeah, slightly better. And, and Vince, who, who actually does all the switching and stuff there, still only thinks I'm 90% there. You've been gargling some honey and lemon and all this sort of thing. Oh, there you go. Strepsils. Even better. 
Sugar-free, no less. Sugar-free lemon strepsils, definitely, uh, are uh, keeping me very much in the game. Uh, but not enough about me uh, performing her. What about you? Well, hopefully, yeah, I mean, I'm going to ski today, which is exciting. So um, as much as I enjoyed your company last weekend, I was very frustrated not to, to get on the water. And of course, the week before, I wasn't even uh, in the country in Madrid. So um, yeah, it, it's the third. You know, this is what I live for, uh, being a European. I mean, five tournaments in five weekends, it's the most sort of fun you can have as an athlete. You really do feel like an athlete. You're, you're skiing week in, week out. You're traveling. Um, it doesn't feel like it did 10 years ago where it was sort of like, you know, one event every uh, handful of, you know, like a month or two. It, it really feels like we're, we're doing things properly. So um, to miss those first two tournaments was very, very disappointing, but I didn't do it without a good reason. I had a sore back. I'm now, uh, well, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm back, 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 but I'm, I'm back to some degree. I've done three practices this week and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it my best shot. We've got a few rounds and the final tomorrow. So let's go for it. Now, now, this isn't the first time that you've actually skied uh, hurt, uh, so, to, so to speak. I mean, about this time last year, you were nursing a bit of an injury. I believe it's something to do with your back or maybe the shoulder. So probably you more than anyone knows how important it is. I mean, when you're in, when you're in a competition, like knowing what, you, knowing what your body's doing, what it's feeling and, you know, making, making sometimes difficult decisions going down the line. Yeah, I think you know. I think I've been pretty unlucky. Uh, well, certainly this year. Last year was just a bit of overuse. I, I, I strained it and, and then probably didn't give it the rest that it needed. Uh, this year, yeah, like I like I sort of mentioned last week, I'm moving a, a heavy table, which you know, it's not something I do very often. And uh, usually I, I can sort of withstand or a the strains of statue. Well, yeah, I mounted upon a table, which was probably a very bad combination. <laughs> Um, Where? But uh, in Italy, I'm back I'm here and you know fighting fit to some degree and and, and looking to push as, as far as I can go. Um, maybe not the the most I fancy myself in terms of uh, performance, but but we've got like I say a few rounds to build in and and um, you know I'll, I'll, I'll certainly try my my best. I'm very happy. Kayafas is a phenomenal place we've it's actually been a really unique week in, in pro water skiing um i've never really had a week like this and it's been maybe one of the best experiences i've had in, in skiing it just uh -huh. just in terms of most of us all turned up on monday you know me and uh, will asher and jamie Bull were on the same flight Corey, and we, we turned up in um you know this was late on monday we got here on tuesday same with Corey vaughan uh we've had ali nicholson matteo Laderi. Benny Stalabar all floating around and a, and, a, and a you know bunch of people coming in throughout the week. So we've all kind of been hanging out together. Yesterday we went to some waterfalls and you know did a bit of R and R, which it certainly didn't feel like a pro tournament um, in a lot of ways. It was very relaxed. But here we are today, and, and it's a different gear. We're, we're going to give it our all. Um, but having had such a good week, we've been very well looked after by the organisers here. It's just I mean it's, they've gone above and beyond, and it really does make a difference. We're obviously grateful to every single pro event organiser uh, that out there, but it's been special this week it really has and very unusual in some ways yes right you are and i mean uh, i mean the organization here in this competition uh, been absolutely superb i mean abs absolutely top rate you know i mean i mean i mean these folks there i mean you ask you ask for something you know and they'll they'll they'll, they'll do it, they'll do their best to make sure that it's that it's uh, if it's a reasonable request that it's that it's provided for you know and uh, that is certainly true. Yeah, we, we've seen that all week. You know, they've been. Okay. Yeah, it's just been. It's been. It really has been incredible. It really has been. All right then. So first gear out is going to be from Italia, and this is going to be a Licia Bagnoli. And uh, so, just to just to explain to you the uh, the the eccentricities involved with that site, the boat's going to pick up the skier from the dock. It's going to go down to the left side of the course and they're going to enter through this gap right here and once they do that that's basically the cue for the for the skier to pull out to the right as if they were to shorten or drop down that kind of stuff now when when that 45 seconds or 50 or 55 depending upon how uh, how generous the officials are with the drop down time is concerned once that drop down time is expired then the skiers will pull out the water they go through this gap and then then they're almost on top of the pre-gates 
and then you've got the course and everything works out from there of ready. Yeah, it's and it's actually it's going to be a new experience today. We've done a lot of practice this weekend, this week, sorry, and uh, we've not practiced just like this, so it's going to be uh, an interesting one. Um, it's great. I mean, I think it's a, it's a really cool thing. We see it at the Moomba Masters, another phenomenal tournament, um, where we'll start in the middle, that you know, get it, the crowd all excited. There's a crowd building here. We're going to see that grow and grow throughout the weekend, and uh, you know, you're in amongst it as you go down to the dock. You don't feel like you're sort of you know stuck at one end miles away. Um, and here's Alice for the first pass of the Caiaphas battle actually ever, because this is a first year event. All right, here we go. This is Alice Bagnoli. Round buoy number one, looking in good shape. For the first third of the course, now she's halfway. And looking strong out there, I'd say. I mean, for, I mean she's uh, practiced a little bit here, not as much as some of the others, but uh, she seems to have it uh, pretty much dialed in so far on 14.25 meters. And uh, with that in mind, let's check in dockside uh, with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back. We're here with Holly. Just got changed, got ready to get in the water. How's you, how are you feeling today, Holly? Feeling pretty good. Excited that we have, you know, a couple rounds to feel it out before we get down to the, the nitty gritty for the finals tomorrow. So, uh, you know, kind of takes the pressure off, I think, for today. All right, perfect. And how are you liking Greece so far? Oh my gosh, I've been loving it. So we went sightseeing in Athens yesterday. We went and saw a waterfall like an hour and a half from here. Phenomenal. It was amazing. Yeah. Like all right, all right. I guess you charged up. You're ready to go. And good luck to you. And back to you, Tony. Thank you very much. Uh, Lorenzo doing a, a fine job here on uh, Dockside. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll check in with him uh, periodically as the event unfolds. Uh, we've got, uh, got Freddie Winter here uh, also checking in with the, uh, with, the, with the Water Ski Pro Tour at Instagram, you know, making sure that we're getting some fresh content being, uh, being blasted out to you at, uh, at, at every given opportunity. So uh, let's have a look at Alicia Bagnoli. She's gone through 14. This is now the green loop, 30 meters or 32 off. So let's have a look, 30 meters. Just trying to keep the ski out ahead of her. Now this water reacts a little bit differently to most other uh, freshwater sites. Uh, it is, uh, one could term it to be quite brackish. It's a, a mixture of, of fresh and salt water uh, with uh, little bits of properties uh, from, from both types. Now, Freddie, you, you skied in water like this because, I mean, in your formative years, I mean, you skied in almost pure salt water over at uh, Porta Heli, uh, the home of the Ververoda at Ski School. Wow. And uh, what, do you, what, do you what is there to expect whenever you transition from freshwater, which is where you typically ski at right now, to something like this? Well, this is actually very unique. I mean, you mentioned Porta Heli, that's very salty. And, and actually this would be, and, and of course, when it's very salty, your ski rides very high in the water and it's very, very fast. So you feel, you know, you've got good zip, but of course the slowing down is, is the hard part. This, for whatever reason, although there is some salt in it, I think there's some minerals, there's, there's some sulfur springs around the corner somewhere. We're, we're actually sort of on a, 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 a part of, of a big lake, even though it's very covered in this area. So there's some springs somewhere in this lake, and I think that that makes the, the, the water have this makeup that makes it very, very slow. I mean, I wonder if, if, if there was no, we're very close to the sea, if there was no salt in this, we would be in trouble, I think. It would be very, very slow. Um, but it's great. I mean, you know, we've had a lot of, uh, we've all been here, you know, there's been a lot of skiing this week. We've kind of all jumped in the boat, done a bit of coaching. Everyone's been saying about how the water is very slow. So not typical salt water by any means, but I think that, you know, that can be really good. Alice is coming through on 12. She's going to take the lead because she's the first skier. Uh, she's probably expected to run this pass and, you know, she's been running halfway through 11. Um, of course, she wants to beat her, her boyfriend. Um, there's always good competition. But he's left the door wide open with schools, I think, yesterday, I think two and a half at 11. So it's not, you know, she, as long as she beats Vince, then uh, sh she's a winner in some degrees. Okay, so, I mean, she's skiing in uh, something in water that would be typically regarded as slow. So does that have a tendency to kind of like grab the front towards the end of the turn and kind of like force it, force it into gaining, gaining maximum angle a little bit too soon? It, you just sort of you lose speed off the second wake um so so you you know the ski just feels like it's riding low in the water it's frankly it skis really good i'm i'm excited for it i mean I, I, like i said i'm not exactly in in my my best shape of all time but 
which is frustrating because I feel like there could be some really good scores. Uh, well, there will be some really good scores this weekend, but I, I would like to be joining them. Um, the, Nick Parsons, as an example, he came here on, I think, Wednesday or Thursday uh, afternoon and he, and he had his ski set and he said, wow, like, it, it, the, the, the ski holds really well, there's good grip, but it does not feel like you kind of have extra space at the board because you're slowing down before it. You don't kind of get that whip out uh, and continue uh, keeping your width into the buoy. All right, this is 11.25 meters now. She's chomping up the bit for this one because she hasn't run one. this pass uh, very much during the course of the season. She's but I tell you what, look at this. Come She's on, halfway down the course. Come on, Alice. Oh. oh, and she may try to make a play on number four. I think she actually, actually got the ski round. We're going to take a look. Yeah, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a look look at the instant replay to check to see whether she actually made it round number four. So uh, let's take a look at this, Freddie, because she got an absolutely fantastic shot. Start. Unbelievable yeah, start! Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. I, I was, I'm sort of surprised she only got the four here. She came out of two in really good shape. That's kind of been what's letting her down recently. And then three, maybe a little on the tail, a little bit deep, and probably got pulled in a little bit off the second weight like we were talking about so she approaches four and she realizes that despite being in sort of in so-called good shape she you know she, she didn't have a bad turn there but she just didn't have the width in front of the boy that she would like to as you say make a play and, and go for and go for boy five so um and yeah. I think this is, this is better than what she started off with in San Gervasio last weekend, I believe. Uh, this would be one of her better scores of the year, I'd imagine. We could, we'll probably get confirmation on that, but I, th I don't think she's run more than four this year yet. She might, might have, in, in, in a round, she's probably done 15, 20 rounds of tournament so yeah, far Yeah, she got year. four last week in the first round at San Gervasio. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, she just got a little high-sided. She kind of had the, the weight a little bit on the wrong end of the ski, uh, like well, a little bit sort of behind her feet, so she wasn't accelerating so well, and then took the four easy four um but crucially she will you know with that start she'll kind of maybe be a little frustrated she didn't run it and, and be looking at the next round and, and, and thinking i'm gonna i'm gonna really run that pass so do you think the fact that she's not exactly chasing a qualification shot uh, per se kind of like takes the edge off of it a little uh, pressure pressure wise and and maybe she she wasn't probably gunning for it quite as much on the on in this instance no i don't think so i think every, everyone's trying their hardest i mean it's, you know it's it's like it's like in formula one no one gets eliminated in formula one right like there's t there's 20 drivers and then and no one's thrown out if they don't make it through qualifying yeah, you might start at the back but it's still there exactly so so you do want to be as close to the front as possible like in formula one so i think that you know even in these situations where you're not uh trying to get away from being um when we're not uh, when you're sorry when you're not worried about getting chucked out of the competition you're still trying to you know it, it, it's all about trying to get high up of course any ties in the final will go back to to qualifying score so there's a lot on the line here i mean there's a lot of money there's a lot of points and um you know alice she's set up set a good score to start with for sure all right then so this on the water is uh, beatrice yanni who comes to us out of Rome and skis over at the Spolonga uh, facility, which is in itself actually a natural, uh, a natural lake, uh, significantly fresher water than this, no doubt, because it is totally secluded from, from any kind of uh, intrusions uh, from the sea. But someone who's probably more used than anyone on this list to to, a, to an atmosphere where it was like not not man-made type deal you know it was like like a large expanse of water you know and probably more used to used to that kind of atmosphere compared to the three other competitors here is uh, as Alicia Bagnoli just uh, uh, just ex explaining uh, what happened out there and see what adjustments she can make uh, for for round two. But uh, in this time, we're going to bring in uh, Beatrice Yanni, who's uh, who's been slowly recovering back to uh, to top elite form. She had injured her shoulder quite severely. I mean, that's a sh that's a shoulder injury that goes back to the European Championships in Rochetto in 2011 and uh, yeah she took a big old uh, injury there and is still healing from it and has had to change her handle grip as a result going from uh, going from the old handle grip to the one that she's using right now she is a right foot forward skier which means she would typically ride uh, left hand up but now she rides right hand up so let's check in with the dock side 
and uh, Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back. Alicia just got down with her tournament. How was it, Alicia? How did you feel out there? I felt pretty good. I just uh, took the first pass, you know, to kind of get the good feelings and the gates. Um, honestly, I'm a little pissed because I was getting good and I, I think I should have turned 4 at 11, but I think it's a good score for the first round. Exactly. You have another two rounds to get situated and ready for the final. And what do you think about the condition, how the wind feels in the water? Um, you know, the wind, I didn't really feel it so much. I think with the gates, you know, one being faster than the other one. Um, honestly, the wind was my last thought sure. down there. <laughs> All right, perfect. Congratulations on your score and back to you, Tony. All right, Freddie, I'm back. And, uh, and so are you. And we've got... Uh, Ali Nicholson, Dockside, getting uh, getting limbered up, getting stretched out, you know, and uh, you know, her first time here is, I'm sure it's uh, the first time for a lot of our skiers at this at this facility in uh, in Kayapas. Here at the battle for 2022. Now, uh, Beatrice Yani getting through 14.25, now this is 13 meters. Rope shortens after each complete pass for those of you that are relatively new to the tournament water skiing game. So, looking strong on 30 meters. But you know what I've noticed there, Freddie, and uh, we're, we're going to take a look at the instant replay that maybe she's a little more affected by the slower water because it doesn't seem to me, even on 30 meters, that she's getting terribly wide or backside in the turns even at the early stage of the yeah. game. Yeah, it, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time to, to get used to. I mean, it, I, we, I don't want to make too much of a big deal out of this. It's a, it's a very, very good place to ski. And, uh, you know, I think that everyone's going to turn up here. And I do think there's going to be great scores. Alicia has run maybe her best score of the year. Um, I think uh, Bear is going to, going to make it work. As we see the leader of the Pro Tour, so far this year, uh, commanding lead, actually, Jamie Bull. She's won her last two tournaments. In fact, the, the only two tournaments she's entered on the Pro Tour. Um, and she's got a, a best score as well um, from San Gervasio with her one at 10.25, which is huge. I'm going to say that there's a, a good chance she's going to get a, a, a big score just like that today. Um, yeah, let's, let's not uh, focus too much on the conditions. I mean, yeah, slow water is actually, you know, can be really good. Uh, you just need to make sure you pull it just a little, little bit longer through the wakes and uh, you'll be in good shape. All right, let's take a look at this. This is the 12 meter run. Uh, Alicia Bagnoli ran this uh, as our first skier out. And uh, let's see if her uh, compatriot, uh, Beatriz Iani, can do the same here and now. A little slow off number three though, it does have to be said, but that does allow for the ski to rotate under the line and go cross course. And, give her a, mu a much uh, a much greater chance of actually arriving at buoys with a little bit sooner in uh, some instances freddie yeah i i, was, I think uh she, like you said she was a little bit slow it maybe wasn't her tidiest pass it, again not nothing crazy like nothing wrong but just not maybe hooking up in the way that she'd want so she well, what that means is that when you when you have just a little loose line your, your skis moving just a little bit slow it's hard to accelerate in the way that you would like you highlighted this boy three and it's not terrible by any means, but it's it, it's a little slow. But she's fine. Um, I wonder if our uh, our co-commentator from last week, uh, Matteo Bayer's brother, is almost certainly watching. Wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, he watches everything. And prob probably critiquing with his big brain and and uh, analytical mind uh, more than we are. Uh, to be honest with you, he's probably even tweeting at this time, or bit of, or uh, on it, or on Instagram, or doing that kind of stuff. Is he a tweeter? I'm not. I don't really know well, any tweeters. I, well, I do have a Twitter or, handle, or but, I don't, but I, but I, I, yeah. How many tweets make a whatever? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, but there you go. Anyway, I'm not going to finish that sentence. You know where where it goes. Anyway, so here we go. This is Bedra Tiyani. Lead is four. Leaders four, 11.25 meters. And, uh, she's been running this. She's run it, I think, twice or three times in pro tournament this year. That's not the one she wanted. She's going to have to get a big two, and she gets it, actually. And, I mean, three could be... Come on. No, she's, she's struggling with no. that offside turn. Um, it's funny. She, she really got back into it at two, but she's just not... We saw it on, on 12 as well. She's just not getting that angle through, maybe pushing on the ski too much around the back end of the uh, offside there. So uh, frustrating for her because I really was excited for her 
after two that she would kind of get back in it. You see that, just the, the yeah, tip exactly. rise, uh, maybe maybe grabbing the handle just a tiny bit early. That's a fantastic turn. And, uh, you know, got herself back in good shape and with space. And I think she's just she's just moving her weight back too much through the back end of that turn uh, the, on the offside. So she's just not getting that swing into 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 the next the next boy. Right, you are, and uh, she comes up short of uh, Alicia Bagnoli with, uh, with three at 11.25 metres. There is your way too early leaderboard with, uh, with Alicia in the lead with four and uh, Beatriz here with three. Yep, and up next, uh, trying to beat that leading score of four is Ali Nicholson. Ali, one of the one of the good people in water ski, I'm going to say. I mean, someone that, that, that you know, as much as all of these organizers like, there uh, I went and got a rental car, I drove around by myself, I drove through Athens support, by myself. All of them. That was terrifying. <laughs> and, and she's, 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 uh, she's driving American in Athens abroad. was horrible. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I mean, typical. I mean, she, she comes to us originally out of Gallatin in Tennessee, which is about as country as you get. And then, then she, then because of her work, she's kind of like transplanted into the Greater Orlando area, where she, where she is a travelling nurse. I mean, she's taking time away from that occupation to do what she's doing for us right here and now. And she, she did all the exploration bit. She went to Venice. She went to Milan and do it, did all of all, all, all of that with her boyfriend. And now the boyfriend's gone back to the United States, and now her mum comes across to accompany her to all of these sights and sounds and everything. And she just mentioned a little visit to Athens and that kind of stuff. We go down and drop, right? getting lost in all, all, okay. all that, all that you know. So it's been an experience in more ways than one there for, uh, for Ali Nichols. She's certainly making the most of it. And like you say, she, she had Michael, the boyfriend, and Michael was replaced by mother halfway through this week. And um, she's, she's having a good time with it. Uh, she, she told me a story yesterday. She said that she was quite excited when she got upgraded to a, to a significantly bigger car. Uh, when she was going out on, I think, Tuesday to go have her ski set to get used to that new ski because, of course, she's, she's riding a uh, different ski that she started last weekend on after the ski snapped when the handle hit it. Yeah, you're so, absolutely right. Yeah. So she, she got excited because she had this, this nice big car and then she realized it's not what she wanted. She wanted the smallest car possible because of how aggressive the drivers were in Athens. She just thought she was going to get hit at, at any moment. Um, but yeah, so she's, she's, I mean, it's, it's great. She, you know, I think this week, this week she's going to Venice and then she's going to go to, she's done, obviously she did uh, Madrid, which didn't really go away. She came fifth. Uh, she came second last weekend on a, on a ski after, after damage it, well, actually snapping her own uh, in a nasty crash. Um, and, and you know, she actually learned how to drive stick last weekend, I believe. Is that true? I think she said that she grew up with, stick. well, I don't know, maybe not. No, but I mean, but I mean, most Americans drive with automatic, you know. So it's a bit, of, it's a bit of a, uh, yeah. Well, increasingly, it's so funny. I, I, increasingly, the world is moving towards automatic. I've had an automatic car for, you know, in the UK at least for like eight years. And a few years ago, I was here in Greece with a friend of mine. I don't know if he's watching Fedor Karagiannis, and he and he's he he was destroying me for using a. Uh, uh, an, auto. an automatic, and then and I turn up this week and he's to see it, see him on Monday, and he's got an automatic, and I'm like, well, okay. How, how things change. Um, but anyway. This is 13, I believe, the, with the opening pass. Uh, uh, the, the, the pass shorter than 14. Okay, and let's check in with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back. We're here with Jamie, next half on the underwater. How are you feeling, Jamie? Yeah, feeling good. Looks beautiful. We got some mountains in the background, so we're having a good time. All right, perfect. So what do you think about the water conditions uh, here in this lake? Because it's really peculiar, not often you get to ski on fresh water and salt water. What do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, it's my first time skiing in brackish water, so it's been a little different, but had a couple sets this week, so should be good. All right, perfect. Get focused, get situated, and back to you, Tony. Why, thank you there, uh, Lorenzo, uh, on his own little land. It's Lorenzo's land, we call it. And uh, this is the, uh, the Kayafas. Uh, a battle for 2022 and uh, go play for your uh, your chance to win a ski of your choice waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play you can win yourself a d3 or a conley slant ski depending on how accurately you uh, predict the podiums for each event and also the winning score of each event whether it be the women's slalom or the uh, the men's slalom so go to waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play for your chance to enter and win yourself a slalom ski of your choice.
from either the D3 or Conley brand. This is 12 meters and this is Ali Nicholson. Ali looking really good. Um, I would love to know exactly which ski she's on because so, so as we just mentioned, she snapped her original ski, the ski she came to you know, try and do the five events in Europe that she is doing on. Disaster struck, you never want to have your ski snapped. It's well, we're gonna see it right here, aren't we? Yeah, but she, so she got on a spare, which she had with her. I think this might be- The spare? The, the, no, it might even be the other one that she picked up this week in Greece. She said that she, uh, she tried it and she liked it. So I think she's probably only had two sets on it. She had I think, one practice set here this week and then she had a practice set in Aliatos. And um, yeah, I think she's, she's doing a good job. I mean, like I say, it's never a good thing to snap a ski. Well, certainly not uh, during an event, but I mean, anytime we are planning to ski in very competitive events, of course, which she's, she's on a run of them, probably the biggest run that she'll have this year. Uh, but she's managed to pick something up and she looks good and she'll be looking to run this next 11. And we're gonna go to the dock now quickly with Lorenzo. All right, welcome back. So, Bea, how was your set? Um, I'm not very happy with my score, but, but I mean, it, it was okay. It felt a bit, a bit funny, but I think it's me. Like, always the first round, a bit nervous, but I'm ready for the second round. All right, perfect, Bea. So get rested, get ready for round two, and back to you, Tony. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, a great interview in there from, uh, from Lorenzo. He loves those sitting-down shots, so that much I can tell. We've got uh, 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 Ali Nicholson coming into the course now, 11.25 meters, more than four will allow her to take the lead at this early stage and you can definitely see she's a little more confident with this ski she's allowing that ski to complete more of its turn before going cross course however she is on the back on number five and uh, will ski for the wakes and uh, and just like that we got a score of three we got a score of four and now we got a score of five yeah and actually i think that carried on from bayer's uh situation what, what i saw with bayer obviously bayer being a righty and 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 Ali having her left foot at the front, but good 1-3-5. Um, but the, the offside sort of struggling, just not quite getting her feet through a little bit of loose line coming out of 2-4 here. So just watch this, kind of the same as what Bayer had on the offside, just like the, the nose not laying down. She did a good job at 3-3, three, three was good. Um, obviously having to turn a little bit further down course than she would have liked ideally. But here, just not, just finishing on the tail, not moving through that line's kind of, you know, a little bit loose. And so five will do it. But again, she's taking the lead. Uh, let's say that uh, probably Jamie's gonna be hot favorite to take the lead, but she's guaranteed herself second after the first round of qualifying. Okay, and, I ask, and I'll ask you the same question again as I, as I did at the end of a Leeches run. Do you think the fact that, 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 none of, that none of these competitors have the pressure of actually qualifying uh, per, per se is kind of, you know, kind of taken the edge off of their need to actually uh, produce something in the high echelon order even at this early stage? No, I mean, I think everyone's an athlete. You don't do this if you're not, you know, hungry to be a winner. Um, a lot of sacrifice goes into this. I mean, you know, Ali's really put her wallet on the table to turn up in, uh, in Europe, just as we all have, as everyone has. And she's not, she's not turning up here to kind of go easy. She's turning up here to, to do really well. So I don't think there's, there's any doubt that she's going as hard as possible. And yeah, she will be really disappointed having run the 38 a, 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 few, a few times uh, last weekend. Nearly every time, actually, uh, she'll be disappointed not to have run that. All right, then. So moving on from... We've got uh, Giovanni Andronico at the helm of that tow boat going through the, uh, the gap. Once the, uh, the boat goes through that gap, then the skier gets the cue to... Uh, take a pull out to the right hand side and uh, dropping in before the uh, the opening pass let me tell you about Pantalago South Florida's most anticipated water sports uh, community with five lakes uh, four acre uh, home home uh, home sites uh, on the waterfront 42 of them as a matter of fact and located next to uh, close close to Palm City in South Florida that is Pantalago and let me tell you also about Waters Wetsuits, designed and created by Brandon Waters. They are jumpsuits for the more discerning water ski jumping athlete. You can find out more about those wetsuits by going to waterswetsuits.com. That is waterswetsuits.com. Opening pass for JB Bull coming right up.
Here we go, 30 meters, same line length as uh, Jamie Paul, another, uh, another member of that. Ali. Yeah, uh, for, uh, for Ali, I beg your pardon. Uh, both of those uh, competitors on Team Syndicate, and both riding the, uh, the Syndicate Pro, and not looking too bad in the opening pass. And let's check in with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dog. We're here with Holly. Just got done with her set. How was it out there? I mean, I thought it felt better than practice. Uh, definitely a little disappointed with the scores, so hopefully more next round, but uh, just keep the head high. All right, perfect. Yeah, you got two more rounds to get that proverbial monkey off your back, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I thought it felt better, so hopefully it just keeps getting better every round. So. All right, we hope so for you as well. Good, uh, good luck on second round. Get focused, and back to you, Tony. Yep, and she will definitely be getting focus uh, between now and then. That much I can tell you with, uh, with Ali Nicholson. I'm Tony Lightfoot. He's Freddie Winter. And we've got uh, Jamie Ball, our final, fourth and final uh, competitor in the, in the pro women's uh, competition uh, on the water right now. And uh, looks settled in with, uh, with 30 meters as a rope in pass. So, so for the benefit of those, those people that are, that are relatively new to short line skiing, and uh, working their way through short lines. What changes actually occur from 13 meter pass to 12? Because it is, it is quite, uh, quite a, quite a no noticeable step up in intensity. I, I think the obvious thing is you've got less rope, which, which would you know, obviously make sense you've got less uh, space at the buoy to get around. But I think the main thing that people maybe don't realize and forget about is that the, it means that the pull comes early. The pull comes, you know, if you think about you shorten a rope on a, or, or a string on a pendulum, it starts swinging quicker. What that means as the rope gets shorter is that you've got the pull out of the turn earlier. So you've actually got to do a better job of getting that ski through and between you and the boat um, before the pull comes on. If you don't, you're going to be out of shape. Jamie you know, did an amazing job here. And, and of course, that's no surprise. Um, but I think that it's, it's a it's such a tricky thing you've got to get the ski through between you and the boat but they're not so deep that the pool when it does come on that you know you, you have to fight it so hard there's there is an optimal uh, amount of leverage you need to get against the boat and finding that six times is not so easy and it becomes obviously as as that amount of leverage goes up you've got to be able to uh as the line gets shorter you've got to be able to uh to find that really not easy and that's where as, as we get shorter and shorter it's very, very hard, and, and um, you'll see the, the, the skiers struggle more and more to the point where they fail. And in water skiing, it is a funny deal. Every single time you go out, you fail in a tournament. You can't, uh, you can't complete it. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you ski for long enough, pass after pass. I mean, you know, it's the course is eventually going to get you. I mean, there, there comes that point. So here we go. This is Jamie Ball. She's run 13 and 12. Five and a quarter for the lead. Yeah, indeed. Uh, this is 11.25 meters. And so far this season, I don't think there's... It's not so good. There's been an instance where she hasn't run this pass so far this season. Let's have a look and see what she's got on number four. And once again, Jamie Ball, consistent as ever, six buoys, and she takes the lead. And she will go to 10.75 meters next. She's taking the lead. She's, she's in it to win it. I think... Just watching that video, I didn't love one and two. She's you know, struggling for rope there a little bit out of the turn. She's, she's not quite getting, maybe, maybe with, that, with that ski slowing down just a little bit, she's not quite getting that nose through and trying to put pressure maybe a touch too early. Um, harsh, of course, to be, to be critical of her. I mean, she's still skied well. She's still skied really well. She's run 11. Um, but here, I was a little concerned that she wasn't going to um, have the easiest time for the second half of the pass, but three was amazing, four was pretty good, and five was very good. So... Um, I think maybe she won't be sitting there at the end of the lake thinking, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm in great shape to run this next pass, which of course she did last week. Uh, her scores so far in the, you know, the European tour of the two tournaments she's done, she's run, I think she's run, uh, she's run one 10, seven, five, I think she's run a three and a half. Those are both last, last week in the first two rounds at uh, San Gervasio and she's run a bunch of threes. So, um, you know, she's pushing her average up with those scores last week. Uh, she'll certainly want to be getting down to the second half. And, you know, honestly, if she gets down to that second half, there's, you know, it's, it's very, it's very hard. Um, very hard. I wonder what the course record is here. Uh, I think that probably this would be, this would be close. I know there was a tournament here in 2005, Karen Trulove won, I believe. 
Uh, it's a good one. Well done, Jamie. That's Nicely great. Done off number one. She's finished on the tail at two. She's going to get three. Will she turn it and get to four? Come on, Jamie. I think she'll get around it. Probably an S turn, and she's taken the lead comfortably. And four at ten seven five is a good score. I think her second best score of the year, after the one at ten two five she did at San Giovasio last week. And it uh, could end up being a course record. I, I mean, I'd be fooled if it wasn't a course record. I mean, you go back to 05, no one was running um, deep 10.75 consistently. There was, you know, there was the odd uh, sort of record tournament, you know, with, with maybe slightly looser uh, driving than what we would be allowed these days. I don't know. But, th I mean, this is exceptional. This is good driving. This is almost certainly um, going to be a four. We saw it was under review. And I think, yeah, that's, yeah, a, it is. that's a four. Um, no need to look at that too closely, I wouldn't say. Uh, and well yeah. done her, 4 at 10, 7, 5. She'll be, I'm going to say, probably pretty happy with that. She's out the gates with a great score, and uh, she's, she's up and running. Yeah, and looking over towards the boat, no, because the shoreline does come up on you uh, pretty soon there uh, on, on, that, on that side, of, on that side of, the, of the course. Watch this boy one. That's how you do it. Nose came through. She didn't push on the tail. She was able to accelerate from the middle of the ski, which is exactly where you want to be the whole time. Not her best two. Grabbed a little early. We kind of saw that on the, on the 11 as well, but this is smart skiing. She did enough to get her, you know, didn't throw everything in the water. She has probably one of the better offsides of anyone in the sport. Um, frequently runs the pass, the hardest passes, based on her offside, which is so unusual. So uh, did, a, did a good job at three there, around four. And I, I don't know, I, I didn't watch her practice with, with, a, with a, a huge degree of detail, but at the, se at the same time, um, I think that's probably closer to, to the top end of what she was running this week, so she'll be happy, and she's, she's certainly going to be building, building, building through the weekend, going for her third consecutive tour win. Uh, this year, and I, and I believe, given that the World Championships was the last tournament she entered last year, it would be her fourth consecutive tour win. Uh, if she does, of course, manage to triumph this weekend, Tony. Yeah, she is. Uh, she's definitely on fire on her game. You know, I mean, she she missed a few tournaments. I mean, uh, uh, you said there at the early part of the season, but I mean, once she gets back into it, you know, she's she's virtually unstoppable. You know, I mean, she she just has that style. She has that technique. You know, she turns to a default position, you know, locks in and goes, you know, and, ju and it just looks oh so simple. Well, let's look at the scores. So looking at our leaderboard, we've got Jamie in the lead. Five boys back from the four at 10.75 is Ali. Ali, of course, will be disappointed. And, you know, if she'd have managed to get around that six, would have got a couple at 10.75. So it's ever slightly deceptive. But, um, you know, and then but then it's tight. Uh, Alice four, Bayer three. Um, I think we're going to be... Uh, we're going to be seeing some better scores, certainly, uh, well, from all of the girls, I think, but certainly from Ali, she would have been probably the most disappointed after this. I think we're going to head to commercials, and then we're going to start with the men's slalom after this. My name is Brantley Hawkins. I'm one of the co-founders here at New Dimensions Wellness. My partner and I have over 20 plus years of sports medicine and exercise experience working with the most elite athletes in the world. Together we have developed a proven system that has been sought out by these professional athletes and is now available to you. You will move your body and loosen your joints in ways that you haven't before. It's not your typical weight training, it's not CrossFit, and it's not crunch fitness. Once I got in here, it was a big eye-opener how much different that they go about everything. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Jamie, who just got done skiing. So how was it out there for you? Yeah, it was pretty good. Felt decent, nice first round. Perfect. Well, you did put up a big, big score at, for the first round. Looking to improve second and third round? Absolutely. I feel like skiers are always looking to improve. So happy with the start and uh, just hoping to carry that forward to the next rounds. All right, perfect. Go get focused for the next round and back to you, Tony. Why, thank you there, Lorenzo, doing a fine job there. And also uh, Jamie Ball doing a, a consistent job out there on the water as well. The only, the only competitor out of our four in the women's competition to get through 11.25 meters to establish her lead score. So we look forward to seeing her ski in round two. 
All right then, the uh, the men are about to take to water. Uh, follow, we've got George Hatsis about to take to water first. Then it's uh, Aaron Davies, then Filipos Kiprios, then Matteo Luceri, then Corey Vaughan, Nick Parsons, Jakobanya, Benjamin Stadelbauer, Freddie Winter, and then finally Will Ash. We've got 10 skiers uh, lined up, getting ready to go. And uh, before we do that, let's, uh, let's check in with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back. We're here with the first guy on, on the water today. He basically had the ski on and we asked him to take an interview. How are you feeling today, Yoga? I cannot ex describe what I'm feeling today. Today I'm here to write history. Today is the day that Will Asher, Freddy and all the other guys are going to be beaten by me. So wait to see. Hang on. All right, I guess you got your focus on and your aim is pretty good. That's it. Okay, okay, perfect. So we're going to say best of luck to you and back to you, Tony. Well, I do have to say that, uh, that I think George Hatzis has been watching way too much professional wrestling in the United States, uh, uh, I believe. But there you go. All right then, uh, George, ha George Hatzis uh, getting ready to take to the water. And I'm not too sure what he's going to be starting in on. Uh, I think the minimum starting line length is going to be 28 off, may even be 32. So uh, that could provide a little bit of a challenge in itself. So uh, we got uh, George Hatsis about to take to the water. We're changing driver. We've, uh, we've uh, got uh, Nathan McGarry uh, from, uh, from Great Britain out there on, in the boat getting ready to bring uh, George Hatsis into the course momentarily. Let me tell you about another event that's going to be coming up in October on the, uh, the 7th and 8th. It's going to be broadcast by TWBC. It is the Travis Grand Prix, combining slalom, go-karting and shooting. Make sure you get your entries in uh, as quickly as you can because it is one of those truly unique events. The Travis Grand Prix on October 7th and 8th, broadcast by TWBC. Also, let's check in uh, with uh, with Hobie Lake Ski Club. Uh, they can cancel winter apparently, and uh, they're located close to Jupiter in South Florida and created by Head Hickey. Hobie Lake Ski Club, check those guys out as well. All right then, and George Hatsis uh, leaving the dock to a whole throng of uh, cheers and round the pro round of applause. You know the uh, the Greeks really do get behind uh, their athletes. And uh, George, uh, being one of two in this event, we'll see uh, Philippos Kiprios uh, ski out uh, third off the dock. You see him in the background there with that shot as we take a look at the foreground there with, uh, with Aaron Davies uh, from, from Great Britain. And if there is ever a skier who knows this site in and out, it is going to be uh, uh, George Hatsitz. And uh, he was one of the, the driving forces behind uh, this site, one of the driving forces behind this event, uh, uh, absolutely. So, uh, so George, we'll see what he's got. He's uh, on the other side of the gap, and we're just waiting for the line to tighten to, and to bring him into the course for his opener. I'm Tony Lightfoot, and uh, great to have you on board here at the, uh, at the battle. Here we are at... Uh, in Greece, on the uh, western Peloponnesian coast of this historic, historic country here at uh, Kayafas. George Hatsis. Nice. 13 meters, probably not used to starting on this. A little down course as a result, but managing to get the job done. There you go, it's a six buoy count on the opener on 13 meters. That should give him a little bit of confidence going forward, and maybe a whole bunch of confidence. And let's check in dockside with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back on the dock with here with Aaron. Second skier in the water as we just saw Yorgo finishes his first pass with his focus on his mind. So what's the focus for you this weekend? Uh, it's just doing what I do best, going around buoys, uh, <laughs> just trying to get that 39 pass, that 10-7 pass run. All right, so you do have a pretty strong aim, 10.75, 39. You want to run it, you're going to run it? Well, I'd like to think so. That's, that's, that's the goal, and that's what, that's what I'm going for. All right, perfect. So best of luck to you. Get focused, and back to you, Tony. Yeah, well, things are starting to get pumped up here. We've got uh, uh, George Hadsis out on the water, having run 13 and now getting ready for the 12-meter 
line. So some great skiing so far. And, uh, you know, uh, Aaron Davis about to take to the water after him, a member of the University of Louisiana at Lafayette's Raging Cajuns, not the only uh, person uh, from that university on this uh, on this running order. We'll highlight uh, one or two of the others that are fi that are uh, part of that same institution as well. George Hatsis on 12 meters, looking good off buoy number one. Good, oh, round number two. Look at him go. He's still there. He's still hanging. Oh, drops in hard off number into number four into his exchange but he's going to get three and one half of that effort. And he's got two more rounds to go, so shouldn't be too uh, despondent at this time. But he got, got the start, I tell you what. Got that good edge change. Brought, this, brought the handle in a little bit too soon. That kind of restricted how much that ski could turn off the, off the opening buoy. But was making up time, especially with that elbow slam into buoy number five. But then he dropped everything in, plus the kitchen sink into number four, getting three and a half, and that sets the stall out for our remaining competitors to chase after. So three and a half on 12 for George Hatsis. And our next competitor to go will be Aaron Davies. Take a look one last time at George Hatsis. A little bit of a, a, a tail slide there. He is left foot forward. That would have been on his offside, but number three, he recovered well. And he just tried to, to slow that ski down. So it's either a three or a three and a half. We'll get confirmation by that scores. Uh, it is three and a half. So that's going to be uh, thrown up onto the, uh, the scoreboard, the leaderboard. There you see it. Three and one half at uh, 12 meters. Now, I anticipate the scores are going to be ramped up significantly starting with our next competitor. It's going to be Aaron Davies. Nathan McGarry, who I'm sure has uh, towed Aaron on more than one occasion, including in competition. He was actually one of our drivers at uh, San Gervasio last weekend, uh, just outside uh, Brescia in the northern part of Italy. We've now traveled uh, the best part of uh, 1,200 miles uh, to, the, uh, to the east. At least, first of all, at least to Athens Airport, and then uh, about a good three, three and a half hour uh, car journey there from Athens Airport to take us to the western, uh, western coast of Peloponnesia, which is uh, the, the main peninsula in Greece where many, many historical events uh, took place in uh, places like Messenae and Sparta and all, and, all, and all of those and all those places that have gotten a little bit of rejuvenation, at least in the eyes of, of film viewers, you know, with the 300 and, uh, you know, and, and all of that as well. So, a lot of moving parts, a lot of things to play for here. We've got Aaron Davies out in the water. We're next to Aaron. We've got uh, we've got uh, Philippos Kiprios about to take to the water in just a few moments. But Aaron is yet to come into the course to open up his account. This is going to be his opening pass. It's going to be 30 meters. Oh, nicely done into buoy number one. Really feeding that ski out well into that pre-turn. Looking strong into number four. And just really just trying to get his uh, bearings out there and not try to put too much pressure on his turns. And uh, with that in mind, let's check in with, uh, with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Filippos, another local skier and one of the best skier in Greece. So how are you feeling today? Hello, I'm feeling good. I'm ready to ski in a few minutes and everything looks nice here, so we'll see what happens. All right, all right. We saw Yargo earlier with a pretty good aim, a pretty good focus. What's your focus today? What was that, sorry? Oh, oh yes. What's your focus today? I just tried to ski well and, you know, that's it. All right, all right. So best of luck to you and back to you, Tony. Not big on words, but certainly big on deeds out there in the water. Philippos Kiprios, who actually holds the distinction of being the first ever Greek male slalom athlete 
to appear in the World Championship Finals. That took place last season over in, uh, in Lake County in Florida. So looking to try and segue a little bit of that encouraging uh, set there for uh, Filipos Kiprios, but uh, he's uh, just waiting patiently for his turn because Aaron Davies uh, out of the, uh, the northern city of Bolton in England, looking good on 12 meters and just really trying to play this cagely, not trying to overwork the turns, just allowing that ski to work its way around underneath the line. And if he is a little bit behind uh, the pull of the boat and behind behind the line, then he, just, then he just patiently allows that ski to go underneath. And then he just offers a little bit of resistance and, you know, Bob's your uncle, you know? And, uh, and speaking of some great skiers, uh, we've, uh, we've got uh, uh, Beatrice Yani uh, getting installed into the announcing spot. Rubbing her hands and uh, just getting, getting ready to, to do battle here. You might want to put those headphones on. So, as we take a look at, as we check in with the doc, let's check in with, uh, with Bea. How are you doing, Bea? Good. I'm good, thank you, Tony. Good, good. First round, done. First round, done. Yeah. So now you can kind of eat, relax a little bit, and chill now that you've got yeah. your first competitive set out, the, out, out yeah. there. Well, yeah, I can chill a bit, think about what, what I did wrong with my first round, and yeah. Do you have Bayer's last run at 11 ready to read that long request? All right, then. So. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna show your last 11.25 okay. meter run after we get done with Aaron Davis. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean, ouch? Anyway, let's have a look at 11.25 meters. Takes the good strike into buoy number one. Brings the handle down nice and low. Seems to seems to be skiing to a script right now. It se it seems to be from here. Not not really doing anything much out of the ordinary to run this pass. Yeah. And he does that. He does in. You know, 50 seconds to go with our zero off timer before he comes back into the course. So, anything you see here out of the ordinary with uh, with with Aaron Davis as we look at this? Yeah, uh, I just saw that like he's two or four ball. He didn't turn that much, but probably he was just taking it easy. Like, you know. Yeah, let himself. Yeah. yeah, let himself go down course. Not yeah. a late, not not afraid to let himself slide down yeah. course to allow that ski to come around. Yeah, that's true. That's like that one, right? Bit, yeah. Yeah. The back foot, but still managed. And a little bit of a fin release going into yeah, number five, five, but that's but that's not a bad looking run at level. No, it was enough to run it. So yeah. Now things have got to ratchet up a little bit because 10.75 meters comes up. Now it's 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 a hard pass to run at the best of times. So let's see how he adapts to the water and the surroundings and see if he can try and get through this run and maybe put put something out there that the rest of the field has to seriously chase. Here we go, 10.75 bear. Nice key. Oh, look at this. Yeah. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good recovery to number four. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic wow. recovery. That yeah, was, there that you go. was great. Yeah, that yes. Was great. yeah. We're excited for yeah. him, and he's excited himself. Yeah, I was a bit worried on that third ball, but he managed. And whereas George Hatz has had to bail out a little bit off number three into number four, he held on as as we check in with a B Play Fuel vote now for your matches, bplayfuel.com. And uh, just look at this from, uh, from Aaron Davies. What do you see out of number three? This is the critical point. Yeah, he, he break a little bit after the wakes, but then, yeah, he recovered really well on that fourth. And stayed calm. <laughs> do you think a lot of that comes from how he cleared his opening passes, how easy and how non-committal he was to actually get in the ski and yeah. ski the bite because yeah. he could have a little bit more faith with that. Yeah, he was just like going with the boat. Yeah. You know, like, waiting for the boat to pull him. 
to the next point. All right, so there is uh, Filipos Kiprios getting ready to uh, to come out onto the water, but he's going to have to do so, chasing a score at 41 off, 10.25 meters. Now, I don't think we anticipated a skier getting into 41 off this early into this list. Let's have a look. There's one. Ooh. Oh, look at, can he still make it out? Oh, oh. tries to make a play on three, doesn't get outside, but he Do you is think on. He, he took a piece of three? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know you encourage a lot of skiers, yeah. you know, I, I know you have a little bit of bit of faith, you know, from here on there, but you're, you're going to, you're, you're going to see that it'll okay. be inside number three. But I tell you what, he got the best start possible yeah. on number one. And just look, he yeah. just buries himself. Oh, that was close. It was close. Well, was it was close. close. He was close. Close, but not quite round. Yeah. Anyway. Aaron well, David. Two, uh, 10 .25 is a great, it's a good score. Yeah, yeah. That, that would have been a, I mean, had he produced that at the World Championships last season, he might not have been enough to get through to the finals, but he would yeah. have been extremely close. Yeah, that's true. And there, Aaron Davies, I mean, he is just absolutely happy. Yeah, he is. I bet he is. And I'm happy for him. So there you go. That is Aaron Davies as we continue to work along. A uh, quick shout out to uh, to New Dimensions. Uh, New Dimensions, a fitness and nutritional facility uh, based uh, in next to Millennium Mall in Orlando. Trusted by the pros, T Gas, Aliche, uh, Freddy Krueger, Whitney McClintock, Reedy, and Paige Reedy. So go check out New Dimensions online. New Dimensions for their fantastic online training and nutritional programs. Let's check in with Lorenzo's Land. All right, welcome back to the dog with here with Heron. Just posted a great score on the board. So how did you feel out there? Oh, you know, it was a little wobbly at first. But then by the time I got to that fourth pass, that 10-7 pass, everything felt great. Uh, just casting out, moving back. You know, the boat felt great, driver felt great. Everything just came together at the right time. I bet it did, because that 10-7, let me tell you about it, looked amazing. Congratulations, get rested for next round. Back to you, Tony. Was he feeling something that we didn't pick up on? Because he, he said he looked wobbly for the first few passes. I, I didn't see I anything didn't like see that. It. No, no, it felt, yeah, I mean. Maybe he's oversensitive. Maybe. I mean, actually, when like the feeling that the skier has while he's skiing, it's sometimes it's different from what, what you can see. From to what, like, to what, to what we perceive it to be. Yeah, make. yeah. Mm. That's something to think about. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, when I ski back at home, like, and I feel like I've skied pretty bad. Like, my coach, David, the boy is like, you look pretty good to me. No, like, you, feel, no. You, you feel like you're skiing and you feel like a hot mess out there. Yeah. And then, like, someone says, you know, the coach says, okay, you're skiing well. Okay, this is a five-star event, don't forget, here at uh, Kayafas in, uh, in the battle. And there we see Matteo Lizzeri, who's... Uh, an organizer himself, so yeah. he know he knows what it takes to actually pull off uh, an event of of this uh, this stature. So, thank you. So now we've got to score into 41 off 10.25 meters. Does that encourage skiers, or does that make some make them rear back? A no, bit? I think it's gonna encourage skiers like to do to give all they have, you know. And especially at a venue that's as unique as this in terms of a pro tournament water skiing. Yeah. 30 meters, Filipos Kiprios. Now, he has an absolutely beautiful style out there. Just He just extends, just brings the handle out, yeah. locks up, brings in. You know, it's very, very, it, it's rhythmic. It's very, very Which is scripted. Let's check in with Dockside. All right, welcome back to the dock as we just saw Filippo's first pass. Matteo is here with us. How are you feeling, Matteo, today? I feel good. We had a couple of days of practice here. Lake feels unbelievable. Boat, drivers, uh, everything is there for us to do a good score. Uh, let's start with this first round. Okay, I just saw you that you weren't really sure what line length you're starting. Are you afraid a bit of this wind that is picking up and dying down? I'm afraid it's a big word, but I like to get a 10-7 headwind, so I'm going to go off at 12. Uh, start, you know, full gas right away and see what happens. All right, push on that accelerator. Best of luck and back to you, Tony. 
All right then, two Italians that, uh, that used to ski with each other at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Uh, yeah, look at them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, one uh, raging Cajun skier just came off the water, you know. So uh, the representation is uh, is many and varied. Yeah. So, all right. We, now we got Filipos Kiprios. Now he doesn't say much. He doesn't really no. compete much. So no. how much do we know? I mean, about I, him? I mean, I know, I know. I heard that his back hurts, so he's just trying to do his best for this tournament. He was supposed to come to San Gervasio, but at the end he had to pull out because of his back. Sounds like Freddie Winter. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he, he's here as well. Yes, so. he is. Yeah, yeah. so Let's see how their backs are, go I mean, are doing now. Well, I don't think there is a single pharmacy around here that ha that uh, that has a stock of IB ibuprofen because they probably bought it all. <laughs> did you? No, did I buy any ibuprofen? I don't need to buy any ibuprofen, no? but, but Freddie Winter and... Oh, yeah, from them, yeah. yeah. But uh, make sure you take your chance to uh, to win your slalom ski, even better. I mean, you can even enter this if you can predict the podiums if you want. Okay, I'm, okay. Am I in time? Can I do that? Yeah, you yeah. can do that. Yeah, you okay, can go to woodskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Accurately predict the podiums for the women's and the men's competition and also the top scores in each one. And you could win yourself a D3 or a Conley slalom ski. Oh, yes. did you do that? Well, I can't do that. Not on principle anyway. I, don't, I, want, <laughs> I want to keep it fair. You okay. know, like years and years ago when they did fantasy water skiing, you know, yeah. I would win that every single time. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. You know, because I, cause I, I could actually play that game and play it really, really well. But, uh, but, this, but this competition is a lot harder. It's okay. a lot harder to, okay. to predict. Here we go. This is 11.25 meters, Filipos Kiprios. Now, being in pain as he is, he, he withdrew from the San Gervasio Pro event last week. When you get to 11.25 meters, you you being a skier that's actually run this on several occasions, how how painful does it get right now? Well, oh, oh, extremely painful based upon number yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, but still, like he's, he's a really solid skier, so he knows how to recover. Like on at 11, like for him, I think it's a warm-up pass. Yeah. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can pick this apart a little bit, especially as he as he comes across the second week into something like number one, which is his offside turn. He's very solid. Like his arms are really attached to his body. You can see, like he's very solid in the weights. You like those arms, huh? Yeah, I do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Who doesn't? Look here, like here, a little bit shoulder inside, but. It was okay. It was a great pass. A little on the back of the uh, the ski yeah. there, and just uh, uh, just a little bit of room, just enough room to get round buoy number six. So, so now at 10.75 meters, now he knows what the lead is. Yeah. It's two. And and he's and he's gotten gone past that point in a number in a number of tournaments. Don't forget, he was in the in the. In, he was in the World Championship slalom final, which I, which I believe required a score of at least three to three. make to make yeah. it into the runoff and four to make it through to the final. So he's definitely. So here we go. This is Filipos Kiprios. This is 10.75. Oh, look at this. He's round buoy number three. He's good. No. He's okay for four. Throws the handle. Doesn't want to inflict too much pain upon himself. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so he's probably not going to be too particularly pleased with that, but he has two more rounds remaining between now and the end. Yeah. I mean, so, he had a great one ball, and then... Yeah, maybe waited too much. It was just a... Yeah. He just didn't have that kind of snappiness or get up and yeah. go, which is probably... A, a little bit due to the fact that he is nursing a back injury. So it is going to be, what is it, three and a half at 10.75? Three and a half. Yeah. Which puts him in second place after three skiers right now. So there we go. George Hansis in third, Filipos Kiprios in second, and Aaron Davies, your leader, amazingly, with two at 10.25 meters. So...
All right, so. So we certainly applaud the effort. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm sure I'm sure he knows what the score is right now. I mean, both literally and, and you know, and uh, figuratively. There is Matteo Luzzeri coming to us out of uh, San Gervasio. Well, B2. We were there last week. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was a, it was a great, great tournament there. It was. Yes. I made my first pro to podium. Maybe it was stopping on there, yeah? Yes, you did, okay. yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yay for Bay. Yay. Uh, <laughs> Bay -a. Bay -a. I, I, I struggle with the pronunciation. No, I'm sure you're going to make it. Beatrice. 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 Bravo. That's great. Beatrice. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, if I can nail, if I can nail down the name for this site down, <laughs> it will be good. Caiaphas. Uh, okay, so we're... I'm two for two right now. Good. <laughs> All right. So there we go. We got uh, Matteo Lazzari, who, uh, yeah, hate to sound like a broken record, but guess where he skied for in college? UL uh, Lafayette. Yeah, yeah, UL Lafayette. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're coming in force, and uh, and he actually uh, and beyond what he did there in his undergraduate, he went on to Florida State University, where yeah, he in Tallahassee. yeah in Tallahassee. You know about these colleges. No, I know about Matteo. Yeah, you know about <laughs> Matteo, but you, 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 you correlated between Florida State and Tallahassee, and yeah. I'm impressed. But yeah, but he got his doctorate in uh, in sports uh, or psychology, psychology yeah. and uh, and you know his services could be could be uh, required a lot of you know, especially as Italy gets ready to host the Winter Olympic Games. Yeah in what is it 2026 right in court uh, milano cortina yeah i think so yeah probably so here he comes he started oh. at 12 meters line i think he wanted the, what's the psychology behind this yeah like he i thought he said he wanted a 1075 headwind so oh and he almost instantly regretted yeah. that decision off buoy number one but uh, yeah, you know but you know what He's an experienced skier. He knows how to deal with those th yeah. those types of situations. Just manage, like, yeah, yeah, manage it. Well, yeah. Okay, let's check in uh, with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Corey next, starting in the water. So, how are you feeling today, Corey? I feel great. We had a wonderful day yesterday, just traveling around, visiting some waterfalls, swimming in the cool, clean glacial water. It was like the ideal day before a tournament, and now it's a beautiful day and. Uh, it's a low pressure uh, format for the first round, so we can just go have fun. All right, perfect, perfect. And what about the wind situation right now? Does that concern you a bit? Are you going to change your strategy because of that? I mean, you can see it's not too much. I'm not going to change my line lengths. I mean, it's been no wind all week, so the fact that the air is moving uh, is different. But it just feels nice, and uh, nope, going to go test it out and go straight up. All right, all right, then best of luck, and back to you, Tony. Now I went to those waterfalls about it a day. Was, it was great. Like we had so much fun. It was actually really great, refreshing. The water was really cold, but at the same time, it I was wish cool. I had a grail with me. You know, like the holy yeah. grail. You know, where you scoop up some water. And yeah, you drink it no, and it was and it was actually very. Uh, it was fun. I mean, I really like it that we we're all together. You know, like the pros, the skiers, we're all together, do stuff together. We like, it's uh, it's fun. And, and, and a very, very welcome uh, distraction. As a matter yeah. of fact, you can actually uh, find out uh, uh, a little bit more about that trip by checking in with the podcast, the TWBC podcast, the latest episode, the pre-event. You can find that on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, and also on Apple Podcasts. It's the latest one of the episodes from TWBC, the TWBC podcast. Check that one out. And check, Matteo just ran 11, like... Yeah, just like that. Just like that. I just think, like that. I think look looked even better than 12. Yeah, well, I mean, it had to, really. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> but it was, it was great. I mean, he's a great skier. Like, we know each other since we were kids. And he's always been very consistent. And he loves this sport. Like, he's a very su good supporter. And I would like to say ciao to Fidele, who for sure is, going, is oh, watching yeah. right now. Yeah, still in that hospital bed recuperating yeah. for some uh, some back yeah, but surgery. He's, he's getting better. He's he's doing great. He's a strong, strong, strong man. Let's check in with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back to Doc. We're here with Filippo, local boy who just got done skiing. How was it out there, Filippo? Uh, it was very nice, but 
I, I didn't ski well. Um, hope it, everything is nice. It feels very nice. All right, perfect. Well, you got two more rounds to set a good score. Go get rested. Go get focused for the next round. Back to you, Tony. Yeah, in the water. <laughs> All right then, so here we go. We have got Matteo Lizzeri. This is 10.75 meters. Don't forget, he went into the course on 12 to start off his account. Let's have a look. He's round buoy number one. A little delayed down course, but that's to be expected on this line length being this short. Well, come on, Matteo. It's round number three. Come on. He's getting no. oh, makes a play on four. Do you think he got enough of it to, uh, to give him either a quarter or a half? Uh, I don't know, like, look like, yeah, probably a quarter. Probably, probably, we'll see. We'll, we'll have a look at like, the instant replay. This yeah, is... I really would like to, like, yeah, what would happen? Like, first of all, it look nice. Well, this is, uh, let's have a look. This is the, the view the judges will have as well to see. We know that he got round buoy number three. That much we know. Yeah. That sets up this. Oh, it oh, just. Yeah, the ski. The ski actually made it round yeah. and was on its way to the wake. So that's a half. Half. That's a yeah. That's a half. And that being the case, that puts him into a two-way tie with Filipos Kiprios. Yeah, that's true. We have a tie. Yep. Even at this early stage, and still in the lead from Great Britain is Aaron Davies with two at 10.25 meters. So, continuing right along in our broadcasting booth. Yeah, I was moving to Lorenzo. Yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, skewing, I know Lorenzo, skewing, skewing, yeah. skewing very heavy Italian right now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yes. <laughs> Like I know him like since we were kids, like, and I haven't seen him like, for ages until last year at San Gervasio Pro Am because he was there too uh, as an interviewer. Yes. Dark side, yeah. I'm glad we can bring people together. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank you. Not a problem. Not a problem. All right then. I'm Tony Lightfoot. Uh, this is Beatrice. Bravo. Yanni. 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 There you go. Yeah. I'm getting better. Getting better. Yeah, not perfect. You should, you should pronounce it like every two or three minutes, so you're gonna get used to it. You know, say Beatrice. Don't get too, too comfortable with that. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable with that request. Anyway, uh, who do we have on the water? We've got uh, Corey Vaughn, who comes to us out of Bumpus in uh, Virginia, and uh, taking a look at some of the uh, the items here. Uh, that, I believe like it or not, that's, motto, like yeah, that, that's, that's an electric bike. I, I can, I yeah, can, I, I saw it. It was electric. I was like, what? It's beautiful. Like, yeah, it looks I, I can see you on that. I can, oh, really? I can see. I I'll can try it. I, you I, I'm that. gonna ask later if, they, if I can ride it. Yeah, ride it all the way back to. I Italy. have no idea how to do it, but I'll try. I, yeah. 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 I mean, if they let me. Maybe. You know, there was there was that there was actually a series that that, uh, that that showed last year. I think it was on like one of the streaming services that you and McGregor actually rode an electric bike motorcycle from Tierra del Fuego all the way up to Los Angeles, California, to prove that it could be done. Oh, really? Yes. I'm gonna try. What to do a motorcycle yeah. from Tierra del Fuego up yeah. to? Yeah, that, that that'll be a long long journey. <laughs> I know you'd have to avoid the Darien Gap anyway. This uh, we've got uh, on the water. Uh, we've Corey. got uh, Cory Vaughan. We'll see what he's got. We just saw a, a quick look on the dock there of Nick Parsons. 30 meters, uh, Cory not going for the Matteo Lizzeri starting line length. No. Maybe he was he's... taking it like easy, you know? We, we have three rounds. It's just feeling the boat let's check in dockside with Lorenzo's land welcome back with me and Matteo Matteo I saw you a little disappointed disappointed about that score what happened out there I don't know I just can never get in the rhythm I started 
at 12 with the goal of standing aggressive and I can never find a good aggressive turn, a good aggressive cut. Uh, and that at 10-7 paid bad. All right, all right. I guess, well, you know what mistakes are, your mistakes have been, and I guess you're going to work on that right now in the off time. Get rested, get situated, get focused for round two. Back to you, Tony. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, and, and Bea here, uh, listening to that rather, rather intently, just looking for that aggressive turn. Yeah, I mean, you said you, you, you didn't feel the rhythm. I mean, that's what you want at 10.75. Like, you have to be in the rhythm and you have to ski with the boat, you know? Yeah, rather than ski against it, you kind of have to complement what yeah. the boat's doing to you so yeah. far as what you set it with in zero off. Uh, you ski A1, don't you? I ski B1. You ski Bravo, Bravo 1. Yeah, but I think I'll try a second round uh, A1. Okay, breaking news. Uh, uh, Beatrice is going to go yeah. with the... Uh, with the change on the zero off, so we'll we'll be on the lookout from B2 to uh, to A2 possibly. Here we go. This is a Corey Vaughan, looking good for the uh, first two passes, and there isn't too much wrong there, except maybe the pink shorts. No, they're nice. They're nice. Yeah, they are. Yeah, but I don't see you wearing pink. You 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 you're in all black. I'm always in all black. All black. Always. Yeah, like Johnny Cash. Like Johnny Cash. Yeah. I like black, like even my Camaro vest, it's black, you know, I'm always, yeah, I, I wear a lot of... You kind of got, you kind of have that dark aura dark. about you. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. All right. Okay, we'll leave it there. <laughs> All right, then, uh, we've uh, we're just seen Corey Vaughan on the water get through his opening two passes of 13 and 12. There is your leaderboard at this time. Uh, Aaron Davies, uh, at this early stage, five skiers in. Uh, ahead of uh, Luceri and Kiprios, both time with three and a half at 10.75. And there we go, George Hansis in fourth, our uh, fourth skier out that has uh, previously skied. There is Nick Parsons out of Bountiful in Utah and makes his own skis. We'll, uh, we'll focus in on that a little bit. A quick, uh, quick time to tell you about uh, B Play Fuel. Uh, check out the, uh, the matches right now at bplayfuel.com. That is B playfuel.com So E. Corey Vaughan coming back at 10? No, uh, 11, 11, sorry. 1125. 1125, yeah, instead of 13. So, ooh. ooh, horrid number one. But someone like Corey Vaughan doesn't get to where he is on the pro scene by going down yeah, no. softly on number one just because he was a little down course. So, okay, uh, not the perfect 11.25 yeah, meters, but he not the best. He seems to be rearing back a little bit going into his gate shot. Yeah, that probably, probably didn't help. Yeah, and he dropped the shoulder on first ball, but then. But not looking too bad uh, for uh, for all intents and purposes. You know, I mean, he got he got past the rough number one, and then he just said to himself, "So what?" Yeah. Keep yeah, I mean, as I told you earlier, like 11, it's a warm-up pass for them, you know, like... Nothing much a wrong wake with up. that. A wake-up, a wake-up, a wake-up wake up call. Pass. Yeah. Okay. I, I would call it that. Yeah. A kind of like a wake-up call. You, you, yeah. you like using these English-style idioms, don't you? Yeah, I, yes. I do. You, you, <laughs> you, you try and you, you get, you're getting more used, used to me teeing you up with some. So yeah. there you go. We work well together. <laughs> All right, so there is uh, Nick Parsons. Rather pensive look. Typically, he's pretty happy-go-lucky uh, kind of guy. Much like Corey Vaughan, who's going to come into the course at 10.75. The only person that has run this so far is Aaron Davies. And with a number one like that off uh, from Corey Vaughan, that might on, continue Corey. to be the case unless Corey Vaughan can conjure up a beautiful Mom. run at 10.75 yeah, at the last job. third of the course. Great job. great job. I thought he was dead and buried halfway down the course, but I tell you what, he kept he kept that ski moving. It was the pink shirts, I think. <laughs> pink shirts, yeah. We love the shorts. Anyway, yeah, I do. It's got a black accent to them as well. Anyway, <laughs> round buoy number one. Got broken over into yeah. buoy number two, but this is where he started to make things up. 
He's a right foot forward skier, which means that he has to wait for the next left sided turn to make up some time and then just really just drop everything behind the boat and then continue to rock off that right side of turn, left side of turn, three on each side, equal six, and a, uh, a complete pass. So now, uh, Aaron Davis's score, two at uh, 10.25 meters. That's in serious jeopardy now. Jeopardy, uh, it put, it's, it's in danger of being superseded. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he is. I mean, Corey can, can score more than two, but we'll see. Like, he has a bit of headwind. Let's have a look. Ooh. Round number one, and gets no. oh, a half a buoy short a, a, yeah. of Aaron Davis. A bit too hard on that two ball. So right now, I beg your pardon, uh, we got Corey Vaughan safely outside number two, but not safely back to the wakes, which means one these scores half. one and one, one, one half. half. Not enough to be in the lead. But certainly enough to be within striking distance of that lead, Aaron Davies with two at 10, two five. Corey Vaughan with one and a half. And as we see him with this instant replay, let's check in with Lorenzo's land. All right, we got a double interview going by here with Nick, who's about to ski. Hey, here's your handle. The boat is coming up. How are you feeling? Feeling good. Feeling good. There's a lot of people here. This is, uh, this is exciting. So here we go. Here we go. Well, good luck, Nick. And back to you, Tony. Amazing how much taller Nick Parsons is to Lorenzo. Yeah, well, I was watching him while he was interviewing him in, uh, in San Gervasio, and uh, he was standing on the uh, gas tank. Yes. Indeed. Lorenzo, because he, yeah, yeah, like a petrol can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, petrol can, yeah. Yeah, we might need to get another stall down there somewhere to, uh, yeah. to spare his blushes, you know. <laughs> But anyway, I'm Tony Lightfoot. This is uh, Beatrice. Si. Yeah, si. Si. Beatrice, bravo, great job. Bravo. There we go. So there we go. And then we got uh, Nathan McGarry, slightly the more, uh, slightly less uh, difficult for me to pronounce. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And uh, we'll check in dockside uh, with uh, Lorenzo's land. Skia. Yeah. All right, Corey, what a score. How did you feel out there? Yeah, a little bit shaky. It was nice that it was low pressure. I mean, I was able to relax. There's some technical things that I would definitely like to improve for uh, the next round. But good that everything wasn't on the line this one. Now, and then try to come back with some more. All right, perfect. We'd love to see you coming back with some more. Good, um, good, good score. Get focused, get rested, and back to you, Tony. Great you are. There we go. That was uh, uh, Corey Vaughan and there uh, was uh, Lorenzo De Alberto. Let's have a look at the dynamics of this event. Women's, women's round one, we've already done that. Men's round one, uh, we're about, about halfway done with that. Then we'll take a, a, a Greek-sized break before we go into men's round two and then women's round two. But, uh, but I tell you, it's uh, shaping up to be uh, an absolute hunk humdinger of an event this five star event which is the maximum stars you can have on the water ski pro tour and uh, with the prize money but certainly so far that's our biggest star event of the year wow yes absolutely they they, they certainly don't mess about here in uh, Kayafas. no they don't no i love this place like i love this place the people yeah yeah, they're so nice. Hos hospitable and welcoming yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I feel like stuff. home. It feels like home. Yeah. And I know how good home is. Yeah. There we go, in Italy. So here we go. This is Nick Parsons out of Bountiful in Utah. Has his own ski company, produces his own skis, yeah. the Parsons. Have you had a look at the Parsons brand, uh, man? The ski? Yeah. I've never tried it, but yeah, I know. 
All right, let's check in with uh, Lorenzo's land. All right, All right welcome, welcome back, back to the dog with Jacob Nesky on the water. How are you feeling today, Jacob? I'm feeling great. Super excited to be here and super excited to get out and ski again. All right, perfect. We saw you dancing a little bit to this music that they're playing right now. Are you liking it, huh? I'm loving it. And uh, just super excited to get out there and dance a little bit more on the water. All right, perfect. Then good luck and back to you, Tony. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, L Lorenzo likes his EDM, doesn't he? His European yeah. European dance music. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Hey, even Jakob. Now I wanted to say Jakob name. Jakob. 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 Bravo. Jakob. Yeah. Jakob. Yeah. It's not Jacob. It's no, it's not. No. no, it's not. But I mean... Jokob. Jokob. There you go. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, the education of Tony Lightfoot yeah. continues. <laughs> As, as, as much as uh, uh, Beatrice Bravo. Yanni's yeah. education on, ah, okay. on English style idioms continues. All right, win the ski of your choice. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Waterskibroadcasting.com forward slash play. Also, check out Pro Gear Gloves, the originals uh, created by Clint Stadelbauer and now managed by Alicia Bagnoli. Check them out at skiprogear.com. That is skiprogear.com. Nick Parsons. Oh yeah, there. It, I think that was a hand drag, wasn't it? On that, on number six. I, yeah. I think I saw that. You know, very, very confident on the opening two passes of 13 and 12. Don't see much wrong with that as he skis through the gap. Now, now that, now that's a unique feature to this, to this venue, to this course. Now, how does that actually feel going through the gap, knowing that the boat's not straight enough to take the pre-gate? Uh, before you get to that point, uh, if you you you, sh you would feel a bit fast, but I mean, once you you know it, once you get used to it, it's it's fine. It's yeah, just like most things, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you just if first time it spooks you a little bit, second time not so much. Yeah. So, Jakob. Yeah, better. Jakob. Jakob getting ready to ski he comes to us out of sweden he's actually not not doing too badly in the in the water ski pro tour standings uh, got a high finish in both the uh san Gervasio and it uh, swiss pro which meant took it took place months apart so now we're waiting on uh, on Nick passes to come back in. What was it on 11.25? However, let's not be surprised that if he tries the uh, the opt up. You no, know I mean because that could be thrown into the mix. And uh, here I am with uh, Bear Fritcher. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm You're learning. good. You're yeah, good. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, maybe maybe I should take Italian on Duolingo. Maybe I'll be better. <laughs> No, 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 it's fine. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. All right, here we go. Nick Parsons, 11.25 meters. Skiing with A2 rather surprisingly. A2? Yes. Which means that the boat's reaction is a little delayed with about a medium amount of intensity to uh, going, going forwards. I like the way that your brother actually explained the whole... Uh, he knows all about it. I off. don't. You, I, just, you, I just trust him. You just trust him? Yeah, I called earlier. I went, okay, what do, what do I do? <laughs> I, I, I trust him. He knows everything about it, about zero. Okay, with that in mind, let's take a look at Nick Parsons selecting A2. Now, a change in the rules about a season or so ago meant that you can actually change your zero off settings as and when you wanted to. Uh, yeah, so, something, something you've been tempted to do uh, at all, or do you just program one and then stay with it? I mean, usually I ski B1 like all the time. I don't change it, but yeah, I think I'll try A2 uh, in the second round and then we'll see. Well, we'll see how it feels. Okay. Well, still very much in the experimental phase of uh, your, your tournament runs, I guess. Uh, but we're still uh, focusing in upon uh, Nick Parsons. He's gone through the opening three passes. 13, 12, and 11.25 meters. The native wake up pass. Pardon? Wake up pass. Yeah, 11. that wake up pass. Yeah, it certainly woke up uh, uh, 
well, the 12 metre pass did for Matteo Luzzeri. But uh, you don't want to be in a position where you have to rely upon a pass like that to uh, to get you out of your slumber. Yeah. There, now, this is 10.75 metres. Oh, well early into buoy number one. Dropped his shoulder in on buoy number two. He's still there for number three. Look at him go. For four, five, and just that momentary lapse, that momentary pause. He didn't round. get through the, so I think it's gonna be three and a half, uh, four, and a, four and a half. Yeah, I believe four and a half. Four and a half. Which would put him, which would put him above Matteo Lizzeri and uh, Filipos Kiprios, yeah. but not, not any higher than the likes of Corey Vaughan, who got one and a half at 10.7, uh, 10.25 meters. And Aaron Davies, who is the lead skier with two on that same line length for 10.25 meters. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so continuing right along. So Nick Parsons, 10.75 meters. He didn't get a bad start, all things considered. Well, he was a little late. And uh, while, uh, while we look at Nick Parsons continuing on, I introduce another person here into the announcing booth. And maybe we can get a good conversation going between uh, Beatrice Bravo, yeah, Beatrice. and Ali. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks, Tony. All right, then. So, uh, you skied, uh, what was it, 5 and 11.25 meters, please, with that effort. I mean, I thought it felt a little bit better than uh, than the practice that I took the other day. So, uh, got some minor adjustments for the next round, hoping to put up a little bit bigger score. So, let's confirm the ski that you're currently riding. Yeah, so actually, um, one of the local dealers here in Athens, uh, Water Motion, set me up with a new uh, Syndicate Pro. So, I'm actually riding that new ski this week. All right, with that in mind, let's check in with... Uh, Renzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Nick, who just got done skiing. So, how was your set, Nick? You know, it was wasn't bad. I kind of expected. I mean, that to happen. This the water is it's salt water. It, everyone says it's brackish, but it's salt water. And the water is 36 Celsius. It's hot. It's just hard to make space. You just don't ski efficient. You're just like I, I tell. I wasn't skiing very efficient because I'm I'm breathing hard. So. Yeah, it was, I'm happy I got down there, but like at 30, at 10, 7, 5, I was, I was chasing slowly. So next round, I got to kind of make some adjustments so I'm not, I started like late, like one ball I was chasing and I was making up ground the whole way. Okay, okay, very analytical on your set. Well, you did look good out there. To be honest, from sure, you did look good. I, I can see that you are short of breath, but, but it's good, no? Yeah, 12 meters, I... I don't know what happened. I was pulling my bib down and my zipper came down and it was just out open and I was just skiing. I was like, what do I do? Oh, I'll just keep skiing and I get down the end and like, I zipped it up. It was fun. All right, go get rested. Get focused from round two as uh, we say goodbye to you. We come over here. We got Benny going. How's it going, Benny? Okay, so our skier on the water is Jakob Bonger from Sweden. Opening pass, 13 meters. Makes it, makes it look so simple. And uh, with that, before we hear from Ali, let's check in with Dockside with Lorenzo. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Benny next year in the water. So how are you feeling today, Benny? Yeah, good. We've been here the whole week in Kaya Fast. Everybody's been super nice. The site is great. And uh, now it's a uh, tournament day, you know? So day one, i uh, gonna go out there and try to have a good time and uh, get a good feeling for it. So everybody says brackish water, Nick says salt water. What do you say about that? I say it's fucking water, man. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Let's go out and ski good. 
Good luck to you and back to you, Tony. And I do have to apologize for the for the expletive uh, I just mentioned there by uh, by Benjamin uh, uh, Stadelbauer. We'd like to keep it PG or you know, but uh, but sometimes those things happen. And my apologies uh, to all of those sensitive to those kinds of comments. So, with that in mind, let's continue mm -hmm. right along. We have a Jakob Bonja. Uh, he'll be coming in on the 12 meters. Here we are. Let's uh, let's check in with him. 12 meters, go. I mean, so as we know, like Jacob's still just getting kind of dialed in here, taking these early passes, just kind of feel out the water. He's looking good, looking strong, just kind of trying to find his rhythm. Yeah. And seem to concur with that, and uh, Beatrice. Yeah, he's just you know getting used to it. Like, just like a just walk in the park, you know, just take your dog out, you know, let it run a little bit, you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I think we're all kind of having to figure out the, the brackish water. I don't think yeah. this is very common for uh, very many of us pros out here. So yeah, it's kind of different, you know, everybody's taking this this first set and the uh, first few passes definitely to kind of feel it out and get used to it. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we see, you know, everybody get more comfortable and higher results as we go on throughout the day and on throughout the rounds. But how many set, how many passes, how many sets do you honestly reckon that it takes? I'm sure it's different for for most of you. But how 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 long did it take for you to get like say settled in? I mean, I thought today felt a lot more comfortable than my practice set on Thursday. So uh, hopefully every set from here on out gets better and better. Um, I thought today felt overall pretty normal. Yeah, me too. Like on Thursday, I felt a bit. I mean, I don't. I'm, Probably I was a bit tired from the travel and everything, but today felt pretty good actually. So hopefully we're gonna get better and better. Oh yes, and let's not forget the strains of traveling now, because I mean we have so many events that are taking place. You know, La San Gervasio. You've got uh, there's an event coming up in Norway right after this one. You know, bouncing around from every major European city. You know, it's uh, it can it can be a rather rather stressful, but uh, you know, but. I'm, I'm imagining that the skiers would rather have that stress than not being able to compete at all. Oh yeah, it's been amazing coming over here and just being able to like travel around and see a yeah. bunch of places. I think coming here was a little, like we had the three hour car ride to get here. Uh, so <laughs> I came out three hours, basically pulled up here and, and took off to practice. So that was probably wearing down on Thursday as well. But today I felt a lot, a lot better, a lot stronger. So yeah, probably yesterday we had a, a great day off, you know, we relaxed. Well, uh, Ali had the three-hour car journey because you came in from Athens. You arrived to, to Kalimata. Yeah, oh, Kalimata, okay. but well, our flight was at 5.30 in the morning, so we woke up at 2.30 <laughs> a.m. That, 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 yeah. that stress travel will do it for you, for sure. All right, so let's have a look at uh, Jakob uh, Bonja. So this was his 11.25 11. pass? Yeah, 11.25 meters, you know, and mean me, me, we when we have conversations and you know that go go beyond the scope of these passes. But that's testament to a lot of these skiers in being able to, to run these passes as simplistically as as we see them, you know. And and this this comes down on to two things, you know, training out there on the water, getting you, yourself dialed in, and then conditioning on uh, the kind of work that you do in the off season, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think everybody's putting in their work and it's been a lot to uh, this. All these journeys and travels are kind of putting all of our off the water work to the test. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. So let's have a look at Jakob. This is at 10.75 meters. Only two people have run this path so far in this round. Will he be the third? Look, oh. Getting a little actually. twisted off too, but he's good to go round number four. Round number five. Oh, oh yeah, there you go, Jacob. That's the easiest one we've seen. Yeah, that was, yeah, really that was nice. great. Yeah, it looked pretty easy. And there, there wasn't a single moment in that pass where you, you felt that he was in trouble. Not at all. I mean, for me, it looked pretty confident with it, in it. Yeah, I think he'll be very happy with that pass. I think it yeah. looked solid all the way through. Pulis had the rope. It, it, yeah, it looked great. And just looking at this, you know, off buoy number three, good approach into number four, good strike there. And then number five, a longish pull, safety check off five, brings the handle in, 
lets the ski ride underneath. He knows that he can get outside number six with sufficient enough angle and speed and gets it done. As we see Benjamin Stadelbauer get loosened up on the dock. So, I mean, based upon what you what you've done out there on the slalom course, I know it's like apples to oranges a little bit. So, you've seen Aaron Davis, and he got two at 10.25 meters. Are we going to see anything, anything considerably more than that, or, or are we going to be seeing more and more of that type of score there and thereabouts? I think only time will tell. I mean, it's all about the start that he gets here. I know that we definitely have, you know, skiers coming up that are capable of getting way down it. Oh, hard one. Yeah, oh, no. I mean, Bea can attest to this too. I think that the gate down here is almost a little hard. I felt a little yeah. like fast coming from that start end. Uh, and I think that that might be catching the men here at their uh, 10 to 5 start. It's just kind of the gates are a little different. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. yeah. Do you think a little of that is due to the water depth at that point because the boat has to come in off a kinked angle uh, coming into the course from the right right off right off center line and then it kinks in and as it kinks in the skier is still on top of the shallow part of that entrance so it means the skier mm, excuse me feels a little quicker maybe it's that or, or maybe because it's a bit narrow at first when you when you because we go, you go through in a really narrow part, and then the lake is just, just getting like wider. Maybe it's a perspective thing. A depth perception. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right on that one. So Jakob Bonja, in third place right now with his one at 10.25 meters. Corey Vaughan, one and a half. And remarkably, second out on the water, Aaron Davies is still in the lead with two at 10.25 meters. I don't think anyone would have predicted that. No, I mean, I know Aaron was really happy with that score. He, uh, you know, came up just short at the 10-7 pass last week, so that was his first 10-2-5 of the year. So I know he was really happy to get one of those under his belt, and uh, he's definitely really happy with that score. And we're going to find out exactly how happy he is because he's going to come on over. And, uh, why didn't you interview him, Ali? All right then, so we got Aaron Davies here. We're getting ready for uh, for Benjamin Stadelbauer, but, uh, but Aaron Davies, I don't think I think you were basically the wild card coming into this event. You got two at ten point two five meters. What what was up with that? Uh, yeah, I mean I've been chasing it this year. Um, I managed to run it a few times last year, but that was the first time I've got through that ten seven five this year. Um, so I'm really happy to have finally done it. Um, there was a little hitch there at, at three to four, but the water here is super slow. Everything slows down, and um, you know I just just managed to get it done at the end. Okay, we'll check back in with Aaron after we check back with Lorenzo's land on the dock. All right, welcome back to the dock. We are here with Jacob, who just got done skiing. Good score for round one. What do you think? No, it felt really good. My start at 39 felt really nice. I started going a little bit passive on the end of the pass, but I had a good feeling going into 41, but didn't really get the gate I wanted. Well, one ball, you know what to do for round two. I guess uh, you, you you felt good on the water, didn't you? Yeah, no, it felt really nice. It felt really nice. All right, perfect, perfect, Jacob. Thank you very much. Get rested for round two, and back to you, Tony. All right, we're going to... Uh, take a check in with and uh, in the in the midst of all of this conversation and uh, some expletives being uh, been voiced here uh, I mean Aaron I mean you right now you must be on a cloud yeah sorry about that um, but yeah no uh, just kind of on cloud nine right now just, it's, yeah I'm really really just happy with my skiing um, so yeah all right we're gonna we're gonna see your pass uh, your effort after we get done with Benjamin Stadelbauer's opening salvo, which I imagine is going to be on 13 meters. However, only one other person, Matteo Lizzeri, went in on 12 meters. Do you understand the mental aspect or the psychology that went into something, that decision, and why a lot of competitors are straight away from making that bold move? Uh, yeah, I mean... So uh, your first pass is in a, is in a headwind, um, so that means your third pass is going to be a headwind as well. 
and that's you know that 1075 pass is the one that you need to run to be putting a score on the on the leaderboard um, so that's why you see quite a lot of people going in on that 12 meter pass so that they can have that 10 7 meter pass into the into the headwind all right so looking at Benjamin Stadopau we're uh, not going to see the instant replay on his pass we're going to have a look at Aaron Davies uh, uh, effort we're going to do what is called a re-rack and uh, find his instant replay which will occur right now let's have a look this is 39 and a half off 1075 go yeah so I've really been working on my uh, outbound swing out towards 135 you see I kind of just double pumped a little there nice to stay calm and ski come around really nice on two there you see I, I, I just getting a little bit disconnected towards three yeah. and what happens here I just get, get a little big with my shoulder <laughs> Think just stay calm, you stay, stay calm, calm. You know, yeah. can't can't do a slow turn on five again. So just get it done, and uh, managed to just swing out to six. And I mean, I tell you what, I mean, I saw that grimace and that expression going into number two, and that uh, pump of the fist going out through the exit <laughs> gates. I mean, your eyes look like the headlamps of like a Ferrari, California. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boom. It's like you know, it, I've got one of them big pulling grimaces um gurning yeah gurning almost and I just, just oh. there that's that that's that two that two on that 41 meter pat on that 41 uh, off pass um so it, it felt okay to start but i wasn't really going to get much more than two i don't think uh but here comes benny back on 12 meters all right one last question is uh, is 41 off doable here Yes, 41 off is very doable. Um, if you get the correct start, you can get it done. Uh, might take me a few more attempts yet, but we will, uh, in a few years, hopefully, hopefully it'll go down. All right then, let's, let's, let's check in with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Freddy. So how are you feeling, Freddy? How do you like the vibe today? It's cool, we got some dance music going. We've got a lot of people on the dock hanging out with us. Uh, making us feel important, which is always nice. Um, yeah, I'm excited to ski. I haven't skied too much in the last few weeks. I've got three very easy sets in this week, so I'm, I can't say I'm not a touch nervous, but we'll see how we go. It's, I mean, very happy to be here. What a place, what a community, and just been looked after especially well this week, because I'm sure everyone's told you today. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, it's also very nice to see you on the dock. Unfortunately, last week you couldn't ski because of your back problem, but I guess your back is feeling better right now, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's better. It's it's better than it was last week. Would I say it's 100%? No, but we'll give it a go. I'm pretty excited to ski. I mean, I've been looking forward to this all week. All right, we're excited to watch you as well. And best of luck. Back to you, Tony. All right then, and thanks a lot. And uh, we've got we got Ali back. Uh, we, we 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 just we just couldn't hold her. We do, we you know she wants she wants to stay next to us and help us out. You know, and we 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 really love her for doing that. You know, always always anything for you, Tony. Okay, uh, let's let's continue on. Uh, he started on 13, came back on 12, ran both those passes, and now this is 11.25 meters. Look at this, Benjamin Stadop. Oh, look, a big delay off number two. But I tell you what, he's a skier that works extremely hard, even during the season, to try and find that equipment match, that combination of physicality on the slalom ski with with the fin settings and the boots, flex pattern, edges, bevels, all, all, all of that, you know, and he's, he's probably about as good as anyone out there in finding the right combination of doing that, Bayer. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I saw him, like, change his keys and just to find the right mount, and I think now he, he got it, he has it, and yeah, he's skin pretty good now. Like, I see him skin solid here. I think Benny's definitely one that, like, you know, is always looking for the next best. He's yeah. trying to always, you know, constantly improve and that kind of stuff. So I think that says a lot about him and a lot about, you know, his ability to adapt yeah, and change. Cool. And I actually understand there's no more room in his house for anything other than his skis right now. <laughs> there's that many skis. <laughs> there's that many skis. <laughs> I you know, would he, believe he, it. He started off with the green monster over at, uh, at Swiss, and he's yeah. already gone through about six or seven skis between that time and now. Oh, point, Yeah. That'll, that'll take up some room. I've seen houses like that where you walk in and they have a whole room de designated to just the skis. The skis. Uh, like a ski bedroom. And then you've got like the workbench and the ski dock and all, and all of those kind of tools, you know, the, 
the calipers. And All right, so here we come, 10-7 for Benny. All right, 10-7-5 from Switzerland, originally out of Geneva. Here he comes. Oh, nice drop on number one. Come on, keep it going. Gets in deep off number three, but managing to recover well off four. Yeah, he's got Green. this. Yeah, Look I think at he's that. got that. Look there at that. You go. That yeah. was a great pass. Yeah, great Definitely pass. looking good. And seems to be finding the mix on on how he approaches these passes as well. He, I mean, his I mean his style and his poise and everything that goes into this. You know, I mean, you I mean you could do a lot with equipment, fin settings, bevels, flex patterns, everything, but you still got to execute on top of the ski. Yeah, I think Vinny's looking really strong out here. Uh, He's been skiing pretty well on the tour so far, and uh, he's been. This is his third stop, so yeah. uh, hoping to see some big scores out of him this weekend. All right, so that's Benjamin Stadelbauer. I believe he's actually the Switzerland's uh, representative in the men's slalom for the World Games coming up uh, next coming weekend, and uh, look forward to see him uh, perform there. Uh, also, those of you that are looking for real estate in Central Florida, check out Drew Ross Realtor. Drew Ross Realtor on Instagram. If you're looking to pur purchase lakefront property in Central Florida, you know who to turn to. That is Drew Ross Realtor on Instagram. Check him out. Also, check out Rap Skis, built by, created by Jody Fisher and built in Cyprus. Try one at Jody Ski School at Lake Gifford, and also try at the Gate Guide System. That is. Rat skis. All right, here we come. Vinny, 10 2 5, 41 off. Let's see if he can get a good start and over, uh, take over the lead from Aaron Davies with the score nice. two. No. Oh. No, he's inside two, I yeah, believe. I believe two. Well, we're going to take a, another look because the officials uh, will no doubt see the video footage. He's pulling into the, uh, to the uh, freshwater wrench dock. Because the water here is brackish, you need to need to keep an eye on your equipment and make sure that if there is any minerals and salt or what have you, that it's washed off immediately. Does he make it out inside mm. one? I think he did. Uh, out. Yeah, uh, he went like. Yeah, he on went it, inside so. two. Yeah, so it's get so he gets the one at ten point. So let's have a look and see, once again, bleeding off some speed into the entrance gate, so rocking back a little bit. A little down course. No, I think he, he's outside. I thought from the original view, I thought he was outside. The screen's a little far away from me, a little bright, so I'm having a hard time kind of seeing mm -hmm. it. But I thought from the original view he was outside. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see yeah, what the judges call. Yeah. Okay, so while we wait that call, Oh, it is two. Two is confirmed, two. okay. Two is good. I think a lot of times the skiers know. I mean, he tried to get that S turn in to get back. Yeah, so I, he was outside. Yeah, normally if, they are, if they're inside, they know. And, and know. then there are some skiers that blatantly try to sell it. Some people <laughs> will try to sell it. Some people will try to sell it, definitely. We've all seen it. All right, then. So we're down to our final two competitors in oh, this opening round, this opening salvo of men's professional water ski competition here at uh, Caiaphas. So here we have Freddie Winter joining us back on the tour. So yeah. he's been out a couple of weeks with a back injury. Uh, yeah. So happy to have him back here. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and uh, certainly been making uh, making a lot of noise on the, on the pro tour, you know. Uh, last time he skied was at Lake 38, where he, uh, he, he ended up on the podium and he also ended up with the skier of the day prize. And with that in mind, let's check in with Dockside with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dock. As Freddie just got in the water, we got heel, Will here getting ready. So how are you feeling today, Will? I feel good today. Yeah, the crowd has a lot of energy. Um, the site looks perfect. The boys have put out some big scores already. Um, that's just a testament to how the lake's skiing. And I'm just planning on going out there and having some fun. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. And does the wind that just picked up concern you a bit, or you're just going to go out and do your thing like you always do? I mean, it makes it feel more comfortable, so <laughs> the wind's fine. Yeah, no problem. All right, perfect. Thank you very much, Will. Good luck, and back to you, Tony. Yes, uh, back to me here in the announcer spot, and we got uh, Beatrice, Beatrice Yanni and uh, Ali Nicholson. One is definitely easier to pronounce than the other, yeah. but uh, 
but definitely uh, some great competition here I mean this site you know the hospitality the folks here I mean they are hardcore into this tournament water ski game especially with the slalom let's have a look on 13 meters currently eight from the Pro Tour standings right now his best score his best raw score is one at 9.75 meters he produced that at Lake 38 which seems like an eternity ago it really does I mean after all the travel and everything it seems like a long time since Lake 38 but uh, it's about a month ago now yeah so he's been he's been missing for about a month and uh so as uh, we continue on we've got the leaderboard we've got uh, uh, we've got uh, Benjamin Stadelbauer in a tie for the lead now with Aaron Davies both of those skiers I either currently attend or have, in, have attended the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Big shout to the Cajuns. And there, uh, Will Asher. Yeah, I, I, I won't sound like a broken record, but he also went there too. <laughs> I can't help it. I, we get it, we get it. Seriously, I can't help <laughs> it if you have these many skiers who have, that, who have, have come from from that from that fine institution you know i mean it it, it just tell it's it tells you something it really does anyway i studied in italy yeah i'm fine <laughs> okay yeah yeah you really had to break our buzz there didn't you oh yeah and, and just for the sake you know ali nicholson go mox <laughs> go mox there you go collegiate skiing though i mean i think it says a lot to see how many people how many of the pros standing on the dock have done collegiate skiing i mean yeah. it's a an experience unlike anything else i think including freddie winter who went to the university of louisiana at monroe yeah, happy. look at him go 12 meters nicely done and doesn't seem to have lost much in the way of a step out there, uh, even though he's recovering from his back injury. Yeah, I mean, I think he took the time off, let it kind of heal up, and respected it a little bit. And so now hopefully he's back and strong as ever and, uh, you know, ready to shake up the leaderboard a little bit this week. What do you say, Bear? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you need to uh, feel your body, you know. If, I, I think this stop helped him a lot. So we will see him skiing like, through it. Now, uh, now, Freddie has had trips into Europe over the last last few seasons. Haven't exactly all gone to plan. I mean, let's remember last season, San Gervasio, where where first of all, half of his equipment didn't arrive. Yeah. Secondly, true. he uh, I think he had either a shoulder or back injury, shoulder. With a yeah, shoulder shoulder injury, shoulder. which stopped him halfway through the event. Yeah. So he's he's trying to come away from Europe, you know, relatively unscathed. And no matter how hard he tries, it's, I don't know, he, he just have, he has trouble with that. I think like equipment not arriving to one of these events is like my worst nightmare. I mean, I tried to get direct flights everywhere that I went and yeah. get there a couple days early, hoping that, yeah. you know, everything works out well. Now, it used to be back in the days of the, uh, of the Pro Tour in the 80s, where the likes of, uh, of Andy Mapple, the late great Andy Mapple, would actually put his backup ski in Christy Overton Johnson's uh, 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 ski, ski bag to make sure that even if his bag didn't arrive, he at least had something to work with. You know, I believe I've heard uh, Jonathan Travers and Will Asher doing that. They put one ski in each bag, so <laughs> hopefully one bag makes it, That's so they, they have, you know... Hopefully both of them make it, but at least one of them ideally would make it. Does, okay. So that is uh, uh, Freddie Winter. He's gone through the first three passes, 13, 12, and now 11.25 meters. Uh, anything out of the ordinary you see here, Bea? I, I, nothing out of ordinary. I mean, it was great. It was solid and easy pass for him. Don't see much wrong with that. What do you say, Ali? No, I think. I mean, I think he looks strong. We'll have to see here. Hopefully, he can get through the 10-7 and uh, be able to challenge our leaders with that two at 41. Um, but I think right now he looks strong, and I think I think we'll see six at 10-7 from Freddie. All right, let's check this out uh, going forwards. <laughs> All right, a little throng of applause there for uh, for our next gear about to take to the water. It's going to be Will Asher, but we still have business to attend to as the wind starts to pick up intensity here. 
Now, that's a golfer's worst nightmare. I don't know. What, I don't know about a skier. But so it is a little up and down. This will be a little yeah. bit of a tailwind here for Freddy's 10-7. So, hopefully, it doesn't cause any issues for him. Let's Looking have. like a pretty good start so yeah. far. 10-7. Look at this. Look at this. You just cannot hold him down for long. There you go. Yeah. That is. Yeah, great picture. pass. Wonderful, wonderfully executed pass from uh, from start to finish there on 10.75 meters. One of the Sorry, one of yeah. the better looking passes. Yeah, I think Freddie will be pretty happy with that. Um, so now he's uh, you know kind of at the money pass as we say here to challenge the leaders, and uh, obviously he wants to put himself at the top and take the lead. I'm sure he's looking uh, for a lot more than two at 41. What do you say about that? Yeah, for sure. Now it's gonna be like for him, you know, his mindset gonna be like do score more than two. Yeah. So Will, the last two weeks, I believe, has run five at yeah. ten two. So um, we're down in that area. So uh, Freddie will, you know, have that score kind of in mind, knowing what Will's capable of, and wanting to go put up a big score just to you know, put the pressure on. So. Continue to roll right along. Top banana. That uh, 10.75 meter pass. Now getting ready for 10.25 meters. Needs a piece of three to put him into an outright lead right now. We've got a two-way tie for the lead between uh, Benjamin Stadelbauer and Aaron Davies. There's the first. There's the second. Oh, and will get two and put himself now in a three-way tie. He seems to be a little bit disappointed with that effort, though. But, I mean, all things considered, coming back from, uh, from a pretty, pretty uh, hefty back injury, he, he did pretty darn well. I think first first round back, I can't be too upset with that. I mean, obviously he wanted yeah. more. Um, I thought he was going in the water yeah. in the turn, so yeah. I'm pretty impressed that he pulled out to get the full two there. So How to turn a slalom ski into a trick ski in, wow. in a split <laughs> second. But he was yeah. certainly aggressive. We're going to hear from him in just a few moments. Well, over the years, we've seen Freddie hold on to some pretty yeah. insane things. Yeah. So. He doesn't let go. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we've seen him launch himself down the lake a couple times. So uh, it's always entertaining to see him ski. All right. He's swimming into the dock and about to uh, to take to the water himself is uh, is Will Asher. Oh, and, and in case you're wondering about that person in the foreground, uh, they, actually, they actually bought like a little kiddies jumbo easel with like the felt tip pen type deal so they could... They can write down the uh, the the numbers and stuff and zero off. I saw it this morning. I was I got a good little laugh out of it. It's like a whiteboard, but like a children's whiteboard. Yeah. Yeah. The ability to improvise and uh, uh, use uh, use whatever is at your disposal is certainly a hallmark of uh, of a great organizer, especially especially among our Greek organizers here at uh, Kaiapis. You know, there's our uh, zero off. Uh, the, re the reaction, the intensity, although although Matteo Yanni actually says that though the numbers are actually a cap on how intense the boat throttles against yeah. you at a certain point, whether it throttles you later or right after you get after, come off the buoy. So anyway, I wanted to ask you and about the zero zero off for you, Ali. What do you currently run with? I run A2. You run A2. You currently run with B1. B1. So a little bit, little bit of difference of opinions here, I'm sure, between the two of you. Let's check in dockside with Lorenzo's land. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with Freddie, who just got done skiing, and it wasn't a bad set for not being at 10.7 in a while, it wasn't it? It was fine. I'm annoyed. I had a terrible gate. I was looking up at the drone here in the sky. It kind of caught my eye at the wrong time, so. Hopefully that won't be there next time. But, um, yeah, stupid. I had a I had a bad gate. I just I didn't get the swing into one. I was I was behind the boat, so I was narrow at one, and I thought I'd be able to get it back at two, but I couldn't. And I, 
I backed off a little bit. The back's a bit sore, so I don't know. I well, we, we, we saw you coming out of that two ball at 10 2 like a maniac. How's your back after that? It's a little sore. I mean, it's, it's, it's like I say, not back to 100%. I probably don't need to be taking hits like that, but I probably won't ski the next round, which is annoying because I want to get a higher seed as possible. If I could have got around three there, which I thought I could have done, I'd be happy, but hey, there you go. Okay, well, think about your back, think about your scores, and get rested, and back to you, Tony. Well, that's significant. It sounds like uh, Freddie Winter will not be skiing round two for choice, and we'll, uh, we'll ski, we'll go straight, we'll go and go and ski in round three in the final type deal. So obviously, still feeling the effects of that injury that he yeah, took probably. on uh, a couple, couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, I think that those decisions are always hard. I was had a little bit of a back injury at the beginning of the year, and uh, I kind of pushed through it a little bit more than I probably should. And by the time I finally was like, okay, I need to take days off, I was struggling um, to do about anything in my life. So, how do you feel about that? Because I mean, your in your major injury wasn't so much the back; it was the shoulder, right? The elbow, actually. An the, elbow, yes. Yeah, I had the shoulder first, and then the elbow. Yeah, I mean, back then I didn't hear my body like as I should, and that 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 was worse. I mean, you have to rest. I mean, you have to feel your body. If you feel like you need to rest, you have to rest. I mean, we're gonna have a, another round tomorrow, so I think it's was a good choice for Freddie. And maybe back in those days, you you might have benefited from the likes of the flow point method, you know, with the online coaching and nutritional support, and also the uh, the the, fi uh, the, uh, the fitness related activities that are provided by Jenny Labar. All you need to ski your best uh, it's the flow point method. Check them out at flowpoint dot flowpoint flowpointmethod.com flowpointmethod.com. Check those guys out, Marcus Brown and Jenny Labar. Also, check out La Guapa, located in Tequesquitengo, which is just a few hours south of Mexico City. All-inclusive luxury villa resort, all-inclusive with water skiing. Check that out, laguapa.mx, laguapa.mx. So, here we go on the water. We've got Will Asher. And just looking impressive out there. I mean, no matter which way you cut it. Yeah, I know Will's been out here uh, for the better part of this week and practicing a lot, so he's probably feeling pretty comfortable out here with the brackish water and whatnot, so uh, hoping to see a big score here from Will. And probably not even thinking too much about the water, you know, thinking it's just, you're just going out there and just having a good time out there because, I mean, I had the, I had the privilege of actually uh, interviewing uh, Will Asher as, as part of the... Uh, the podcast that we, that I did for the event, the pre-event, and he says that he hasn't felt like this in any tournament in recent years. Like Phil feels uplifted and happy, you know, and you know, loose, you know, because of what he did yesterday, which went went to the waterfalls with you, with you guys. Yeah, I think from uh, the you know overall kind of feel that I've had from talking to the, all of the pros is just you know. Everybody feels kind of laid back here and relaxed, and it's yeah. been uh, kind of refreshing of a pro event to be so kind of calm, and uh, we had a blast yesterday. I mean, almost all of the pros went together to the waterfalls and went cliff jumping, and it yeah, was a yeah, nice, a nice kind of change of scenery to have everybody not at the lake. Yeah, and everybody all together, doing stuff together. I think it's, it's good. Like... Next thing you know, they'll be sharing. They'll they'll be sharing private jets anyway. Hopefully, we'll get to that point. I wish. Yeah, absolutely. With uh, with that future goal in mind, let's have a look and see what Will Asher. Eleven point two five meters. Probably not the worst idea I've heard. Pull pull together some money. Get on uh, get on a uh, on a Learjet. We're gonna have to pull together a lot of money for that yeah. one. Yeah, I think so. Will's looking good though here, right through that 11, no problems at all. Bleeding off quite a bit of speed coming into the entrance gates, Bear. I'm sorry? Bleeding off quite a bit of speed, you know, reducing the yeah. speed to the to the entrance. And that was yeah. the gate that we were saying. It's, yeah. a, it's a little tricky. I think it might just be a visual thing, but it does, you feel like you're pretty fast down there on the ends. I don't know if uh, yeah. we're waiting later to pull out because it is narrow or... Um, but I think that that's a pretty common trend from that end. Uh, we're seeing the skiers have to bleed off a bit of speed before they turn in. And very, very similar to the approach from the downtown end at the Moomba Masters, which I believe you skied before. 
Uh, any similarities you found? Um, that downtown end at the Moomba Masters is in and of itself uh, its own challenge but <laughs> the yard is always fun uh, that there you're kind of coming in through that turn and I think you almost get the whip out a little bit uh, so I feel like that was a different turn in every time so <laughs> it's definitely interesting but uh, yeah I think I think that you know different legs come with their different challenges for all the different uh, gate shots and that's our, our challenge for this weekend you know I found that a little bit uh, as well not so much with Moomba but off another site that I used to ski at at Cobles called Lake Hideaway we know where we come out from it from a shallow uh, from a shallow start but anyway a uh, conversation for another day here we go 10.75 meters uh, look at him go around buoy number two look at this dropping in hard off number four yeah he's got this uh, but that was yeah. a got very this. solid pass from Will yeah he's got this yeah it's really a easy. roar of applause yeah. from the crowd here and they love their skiing here. I mean, I mean, that, I mean, we got actually a vocal crowd here on on shore. Yeah, I know it is. It's a little bit refreshing, you know, to have a, a pretty good crowd and they're actually yeah. uh, cheering and uh, it's 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 fun. All right, what do you say, Bear? Yeah, I mean, it's fun to have people here like cheering for everyone and who's very passionate about the sport. So as uh, Will Asher runs through this uh, this pass, and I mean, there was nothing about that that said from the start that he was ever going to be, you know, put put out of his comfort yeah. zone. No, but I think uh, from watching Will the last few weeks, he's been he's looked solid at 10.7 almost every time. So um, I I think we expect no nothing less from from Will there. All right. So course record apparently is four. Okay. Doable. Definitely doable for Will. He's been, I mean, he's been skiing amazing so far on the tour over here in Europe. Um, so I would love to see him get four more here and uh, yeah. you know, challenge that, that course record. I know he would love that too. Three people currently have the lead. Benjamin Stadelmauer, Fred Winter, and Aaron Davies. All with two. So we're looking for a piece of three here to take the lead. Let's have a look and see. Entrance gates. Numero uno. Oh, there he goes. Come He's on, got go. the three. Got the lead. Come on. Come on. Going for four. He's got oh. the four. Got the Can he get the course line. record? Oh. oh, and he's equaled the course record. Look at that. Phenomenal skiing there Phenomenal. from Will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I Up, mean, after that second ball, I was like, probably uh, he's going to get that five. I thought, you know, hang on, he's in it here. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was in it and uh, maybe looking to go all the way there. So. Didn't bleed off as much speed going into the gates that time, and that probably contributed to him being a little bit in better shape into number one. But look at that too. That is classic Will Asher through and through. Down course off number three. Tried to do the same here on number four. Got, got a jolt. And just inside five there. And as he skis into the fresh water rinse, that will think, bring to a conclusion. I think it's going to be pretty doable. Like the, the I think so. Yeah, I think we might yeah. we might see a new course record this yeah. this weekend. Well, the ladies here say that it's doable, and I won't I won't disagree with them. Well, Asher, four buoys at 10.25 meters, scintillating skiing right the way through. We're going to try and get our, uh, our interview with uh, with Will Asher with uh, a reaction to that. But such a great, great performance there. Took the jolt there off number four. You know, at 10.25 meters, you are on the ragged edge every time you hit that course and try to attempt that pass. There's your leaderboard. Any surprises there, ladies? I mean, I think I maybe expected a little bit bigger scores. I think yeah, Aaron Davies skied phenomenal. Uh, you know, kind of expected maybe a little bit more there from Freddie. I think Freddie was hoping for a little yeah. bit more himself. Uh, but overall, some pretty good skiing, and hopefully we see some more, some more through that 10-7 uh, next time. And I could see Aaron Davies right here having a little smirk there at the, uh, at the leaderboard. <laughs> he's, he's happy. And so too is Will, Will, Will Asher. We're going to get a word or two with him as he comes into the dock. But I tell you what, it's very, very close in the top four. I mean, top four when you consider the freeway tie for second. You know, so I mean, Right, right off, right off the get-go, the the scores came in. They came in quickly. They came in high, and you know, we're we're looking forward to some great stuff as Will Asher gets interviewed for the for the local 
uh, announce, announcing uh, a service here on site. But uh, anything you want to add, uh, Bea, uh, based on that? Well, uh, we, we saw like grit skiing, so I hope like for the others that didn't run 39, they're gonna go for it. And even Matteo, I, I wanna ask him about his strategy earlier starting at 12, because I think he, he, was, he was the only one starting at 12. You're probably going to say to him, why the heck did you go in on 12 meters? No. Well, 30. you know, the other no, day, though, I mean, we were practicing from the other end, so it could be that he liked, you know, yeah, we better. were talking about the gates yeah. and whatnot. He might like the gate shot from one end. That could be a strategy. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, tinkering a little bit. So let's uh, check in Dockside one last time with Lorenzo's land. Oh. All right, welcome back to the dock. We're here with we Will, our last gear and top seat after first round. How was your set, Will? No, I was, I was really excited, you know, I, I got to watch everybody ski before me and everyone looked like they were skiing really well. I just love that, I love when the score is, is starting to get up there, you just know that things are right, you know, the drive is good, the boat's good and the sight's good. So, you know, I just wanted to go out there and have fun. I mean, these guys have given us a week that we will never forget. So, for now, it's, this weekend honestly is just a bonus. We're just here to have fun and we're going to put on a show as much as we can and enjoy the weekend. Okay, well, yeah, I guess you're enjoying the weekend so far with the score. And how do you feel about setting the new course record out here? You know, that, that always feels great because I know, you know, there's been some legends that have skied at this place. And to come, to come out here in the first round and set a course record, I think that after the first round, I think more of the guys will get deeper down 41. And I can see it being broken and broken throughout the weekend. So All right, perfect. We really hope that that's going to be the case. Uh, get rested for round two and back to you, Tony. Well, I tell you what, a warning for all the pro skiers, when Will is happy and he's loose, anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Will looked great. And I mean, he's been, I know he's been enjoying being here in Greece and uh, having, having a great time. So uh, I think that, that his scores will show that too as the week goes on. All right, so, uh, so Bear, I mean, we're, we've got the, uh, the men's second round. That'll be coming up at 3.30 Central. Uh, it's not Central European time, but it's a Central the other the other the next time zone, uh, the Eastern European Eastern European, e Eastern European summer time. So be sure to come back for that. You'll see a new webcast player that will have that live live coverage. But you know we've we've got the men, then we've got the women. We kind of flipped it flipped it on its end a little bit. So let let's talk about you two because we've talked about all of these male skiers. We we haven't really talk to so much about you so so bear uh having having gotten your score in the op in the opening round you got what was it three, uh three, three. and eleven point two five meters going forward what's what's what are you what things are you keying on um I, fe I felt a bit like i was skiing i say on eggs we say know. when you ski on eggs yeah concept, maybe too much because I, I felt like I was a bit, yeah, on my, on my back. Uh, on so I, I wasn't that confident this morning, so I, 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 I try to ski more on my, on my ski. I was feeling a bit, yeah. On top of your ski. Yeah. Okay, and we look forward to seeing you ski in the second round. You're wanting to get better than halfway down 11.25 meters. Yeah. As is Ali Nicholson. Uh, you, you've got five at 11.25 meters. You're in a different spot, one boo away from running that pass. Any any changes? Any changes of equipment? Any changes of style, strategy, so on and so forth? Yeah, so um, I've been watching some video. I've been sending some video back home to uh, my coach and my brother. <laughs> uh, one and the same. Uh, so I've actually pulled my boots back a little bit for the next round. We're going to give that a shot. Uh, also, just some technique things, trying to keep the handle in a little bit more. I, I see myself, you know, letting it off off the second wake a little too much. So. Uh, we're gonna try to switch it up. I feel, you know, we got the three rounds, so it doesn't hurt to try something. And then uh, if we don't like it, we can always go back. You're changing zero off, and you're changing boot placement. Yeah. Oh, yes. The, 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 this the, might get interesting. Yeah. Yes, indeed. All right, and that interest continues to, uh, to ratchet up. New webcast player, 3.30 Eastern European summertime. Be back for that but we're now going to terminate this webcast. And until that time, on the behalf of Ali Nicholson and Beatrice Yanni, it is ciao for now. Denali. No hype. Just science.
What if I told you there was a place, a place where the sounds of nature are only broken by the roar of a boat, a place where that summer feeling lasts all year long, a place where the Florida sun is only outshined by the smiles of the skiers, a place where first-time skiers can ski alongside world champions and the world-class coaches work with all levels of skiers. What if I told you there was a place where life slows down and your only job is to make lifelong memories? That place is Swiss Water Ski Resort. Book your trip at SwissWaterSkiResort.com.